彼の残した言葉の中にもあるんですがいい写真を撮るための最初の条件これはカメラを持っていることだと彼が一番思考していたのは多くの人にいかに写真を撮ってもらうか。1960年代前谷さんというあのオリンパスの技術者がいましてねカメラが当時はまだ高級品なので前谷さんをはじめとする開発の方々が多くの人に使ってもらうにはどうしたらいいかって考えた中でカメラ自体をもっと安く作りたい当時 6,000 円で作れないかっていうふうにできたカメラですそして当時高かったフィルム代現像代をその少しでも負担を減らしたいそうしたらハーフサイズのカメラを作ろうそうすると倍取れるのですごく経済的です35ミリカメラの24枚だと48枚取れますそれがあの非常に画期的だということで、えー、使われたペンが出た時にオリンパスを持って家族写真を撮ったりなんかする人が非常にいましたんですね主にプロを中心として使う機材が変わってきていたそのなるべくいいものを作ろうと各社していてどうしても大きくなってしまっているその中でマイタにはやっぱりプロが本当に求めるものってそういうことなのかっていうことに疑問を感じてその中で生まれたのが OM1 だと考えています結局彼がこれ集大成なんですねやっぱりかなり命が引き込まれたカメラではないかなっていうふうに僕は思いますカメラの1996年にオリンパスは最初の民生品のデジタルカメラを出したわけですけれどもフィルムであろうとデジタルであろうとないものを作るというのは全社共通で今でも一番ベーシックなところに流れているのではないかなと考えます。デザインをを検検討討すするときにスケッチを書いてて最初検討してこの次にですね 3D データを入れてからこのようなラフな削りのモデルを作りますでこれをベースにボタンの位置が適切であるかとかあるいはグリップ性能はこれでいいかとかっていうのを検討していくんですけれども我々が一番に考えていることはやはり使われる方ユーザーのことです。If you were that customer, what would the end solution be that you would want? It's important to always be thinking about what do people need, what are they going to need, what's the future going to be, and to aspire to deliver that. The people who are going to be able to get back to the world, the most important thing is. なんですねそれって単なるその、まあ、現像された紙ではなくてこの当時の家族の思い出がやはりそこに残っているってみんなが思うので
思い出を取り戻したいという気持ちがあると思うんですつまり写真にはそれだけの力があると思っていますそのものを作るにあたってはお客様の声というのをすごく大事にしています。マイタリが残した言葉の一つに、我々はカメラを開発提供しているんではなくて、カメラを通じて人々が幸せになることを提供しているんだという言葉があります。ないから作るその精神というのを日々実現しようと、これこそが社会に対するオリンパスの役割だと思っています。Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to my Wednesday live stream on YouTube. It is coffee time with me, Jimmy Chang. If you don't know me, I'm a professional photographer, filmmaker, and yes,、uh, I have my elf hat on, of course. It's Christmas time, right? Okay, well, before I get started, of course, I would like to、uh, say hi to a few people, of course. And、uh, I know some of you are already here already, and I know some of you guys are going to join in a little bit later. So that's okay, that's okay. We've got a lot to get through today because we have the top three Olympus c a m e r a To go through at least, and、uh, I have them all here right in front of me, so there's going to be a few things that we're going to talk about. That and then、uh, there is a little bit of update for you guys as well about this channel for the next、uh, couple of weeks, and then also finally, there could be any QA if you want to ask me about anything. And、uh, that's one thing before I start is that you can probably realize that if you are regular here, you will notice that、uh, somehow something has changed here. Yes, it is the lens, isn't it? Yes,、uh, I am actually testing a new lens, and uh, so uh, see, see, you guys have the privilege to see what I'm actually using, and some of them are my test equipment、uh, that you will see in later on in this channel. And、uh, so, you, you guys are lucky, you know, like you, you will be the judge of just,、uh, you know. For whatever you're seeing at the moment, this is the live image here. And uh, uh, so it, it is cool, right? You know? And、uh, so this is the privilege. So if you haven't subscribed to this channel, remember to subscribe and then I put on the notification so you see everything that I'm going to demonstrate, right? <laughs> cool. Right.、Uh, I don't want to tell you what lens it is because I will tell you about it when you see the video coming out. And hopefully I'll make it in time for the announcement because uh, 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 it is、uh, quite special. You can see it's quite wide, yeah? Instantly, you can see why. So it's a wide. Angle lens. I'm not going to say anymore because、uh, I will I will basically be slaughtered by the company if I leak any information about this particular lens. And、uh, so I would not say anything at all. But before I start, let me just uh, uh, say some hello to people. So, first of all, Min Jae Kim,、uh, good morning or、uh, good evening now in, in Asia if you're in, if you're in Korea. And Victor from Texas. And John, hello from Manchester, Drury. Well, we, we, we aren't doing too、uh, you know, much better than you, mate. You know, like、uh, London is horrible at the moment. Outside is wet, is dull, grey. You know, it's, it's not a day I would like to, to say、um, uh, go out to even just for a walk. It's just horrible weather. And、uh, Christian, for, hello there from Germany, of course. And you have the Silver Edition EM1 Mark II. And I have it right here with me because it did make it to the top three. So I'm going to go through that in a minute. So obviously,、uh, some other people from Taiwan as well. Hello,、uh, Feng, Feng Yilin. Feng Yilin, hello. And Alfonso from Espana. Hello there. How are you? And、uh, Kok Seng Chu, hello. David Crook from Virginia, hello. Ika from Malaysia, hello. And John Yong from Singapore. Slovenia, Victor is online. Yes, Casper, hello there. Steve, Jason from New York City, NYC, yeah. And、uh, Marcin, hello there from Poland. Corner from. 
<laughs> Good morning, chimney. <laughs> I like that, mate. I like that. Cool. Right. That's no. That that's cool. I mean, that, um, you know, I don't climb through a chimney, not like Santa. You know, and uh, I I have my. I have my Santa hat though, and uh, although this this is actually quite quite hot for some reason, and let me just change it. Ooh, it's really hot. It's hotter than this, believe me or not. So this is actually a little bit more comfortable, and uh, so I am going to wear the Santa hat because uh, it's just yeah, ever so just feels a bit better. You know, this is actually quite expensive uh, Santa hat that I bought uh, last year uh, with the kids in the, uh, when we went to see the Santa, you know, go to the Santa grottoes and things and uh, they love it. it. It really is a shame, you know, this year because of the pandemic, the lockdown, um, the, yeah, literally everything's closed. You know, we couldn't go ice skating this year. We couldn't go uh, to see Santa, you know, they, they were looking forward to it and uh, yeah, everything, you know, like we couldn't even go out to see the Christmas lights because London, I, I went out there for photo shoots a couple of weeks ago, there, there weren't many lights at all, you know, because what's the point, right? You know, people can't go out, you know, London was in lockdown for the whole month and uh, so yeah, it's, it's no point decorating it. So when I went out, London was literally empty, you know, like uh, there, there were people, there were some tourists, yeah, believe me or not, there were some tourists, um, there are lots of Instagrammers. Oh yes, there were lots of Instagrammers out there. And, and uh, um, but I, I saw only a few shops here and there, you know, like quite, quite scattered around in Covent Garden, in Regent Street, uh, have some kind of decorations, but overall, Overall, I think Christmas this year in London is, uh, I, I wouldn't even call it Christmas, to be honest. It, I, don't, I don't feel the festive stuff going on, you know. I don't have that feeling. It's not, nothing at all. No vibe, no energy anywhere. I guess that that's can go with everywhere now, wherever uh, 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 that's been affected by this horrible uh, uh, virus at the moment. So, uh, so blessed to all of you guys, and I just hope that things will return to normal next year. And I cannot wait for that to happen. Uh, because obviously I'm, I'm heavily affected. Uh, if you you don't know already, you know my business just just gone out to the window this year. And uh, but but on the flip side, I'm concentrating more on YouTube. So uh, so this is why I'm doing a lot of live sessions and things. I, I've increased my video production uh, uh, from uh, from just basically one episode a week to two episodes a week uh, plus the live. So three releases every week so it's quite a lot for me uh but having said that i'm quite enjoying it and like i said so many times i really enjoy my wednesday live session with you and uh, it's just a fantastic opportunity to communicate and also interact with you yeah speaking of number of episodes i'm releasing every week over the next two weeks i have to reduce the number of uh, uh, videos because my family is at home you know my my, my kids uh this this week especially i was I was going to utilize this week to kind of ramp up my production. Hopefully I can cover some of the work for the next couple of weeks. However, because uh, I'm not sure, uh, you know, whether you heard the news or not, uh, 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 London or sections of London are in local lockdown. So uh, uh, the uh, my area, my area was actually included in the list. So school schools closed and uh, my kids were sent home. And uh, so now they're full time at home. That means I cannot work when they're at home. I cannot work, and uh, I said it right at the beginning when when we first had the national lockdown in, in the beginning of the year. So it's quite quite something, quite hard to deal with, and uh, uh, that's why for the next two weeks, I will try to make videos. But obviously, family comes first, and also uh, uh, this week is basically out of the window. Uh, I am still trying to make the uh, the video for uh, uh, for the lens. Uh, release that I'm uh, I'm just telling you earlier this uh, in today's stream. So I'm excited about this. I'm I'm hoping I can finish that video for you guys to see. Uh, but over the next two weeks, I'm gonna have limited amount of output, unfortunately. So, uh, but I will try to keep the live. So stay tuned for 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 my releases. I will be posting uh, my community post, updating you guys what's going on, so you know exactly whether that's gonna be a video or not. And, uh, and so is my Facebook. If you don't know my Facebook, the link is. Here, nope, oh, nope, oh, here. <laughs> you got all my social stuff there, so you can actually see the, all my latest update. My uh, Facebook is easy, you know, like just go search Jimmy Chang, you find me there, and just follow me there. I'll usually announce a lot of stuff on uh, through Facebook, uh, and so is my Instagram. So, like, stay tuned for that. Okay, right, I can see a few more people have joined already. Let's say hello as well. Leon, hello there from South Africa. Great stuff. Glad the EM5 Mark III firmware update is now corrected. And, uh, oh, okay. Hmm. Thank you for letting me know. I 
I still haven't updated the uh, the the EM5 uh, 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 firmware just yet. I've only updated the EM1X uh, because I've heard so many of you talking about the firmware uh, issues, about the battery drain issues, and uh, a couple of little minor things. So I am waiting to uh, update my EM1 Mark III, which I have it right here. So I have the EM1 Mark III here. I haven't updated yet. Still the old firmware. And uh, and so is the uh, EM5 Mark III is still running the older firmware. The only one that is up to date at the moment is the one I'm using right now, the EM1X. Uh, because I don't mind, I don't care about the battery issues because I've got running two batteries at the same time. So like <laughs> that should alleviate the problems to to an extent if there is a problem. Uh, but so far I'm actually not uh, experiencing any battery drain issue from my EM1X. So maybe an isolated case, uh, but. You let me know exactly what's going on and uh, maybe I will be able to report back to Olympus and let them know exactly what's going on with the firmware uh, on any of the cameras that you have in the moment and uh, uh, then just I'll just see what the feedback is uh, and I can report back to you guys. Okay, and um, Paul from Vancouver. Hello, Paul. Excellent. So, shall we get started? I think we shall because uh, 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 I have received over 1200 votes from you guys and uh, is uh, uh, to vote what is the most popular uh, Olympus cameras currently in 2020's catalog right I'm not talking about older cameras yeah I'm not talking about the most popular cameras uh, ever you know produced by Olympus I'm only talking about in uh, in 2020 things are still on sale uh, uh, in the catalog for uh, that means current the current cameras so I've listed them out um, it is a shame that you know the the YouTube only allows me uh, only allows me to put five items at a time for for voting you know I would I would like to just have a whole list of people just to, you know click on it and things like that but no I have to separate into three different posts to do that and uh, hopefully they, that will change in the future that means if I ever want to do a poll for any Anything, then I can just list them all out rather than have to you know separate into two three different posts and to, to do it but anyway the result is in I have I have over 1200 votes from you and then uh, we have the winners of this year's so <laughs> and um, let me just show you the uh, the actual uh, uh, graph let me just see where is it gone and uh, there we go so I've done the bar chart so you can see exactly uh, how um, how the other cameras fare compared to uh, you know the models that you're seeing yeah okay one second there we go bang okay guys you can see that this is the uh, <laughs> the numbers yeah so starting with the EM1X and I go through the list now you got the EM1 Mark 3 the Mark 2 the EM5 Mark 3 Mark 2 the EM10 Mark 4 3 and 2 yes Olympus still selling the EM10 Mark 2 because it's a great camera right and then uh, the Pen, EPL8, EPL9, EPL10, and I put the bracket there, 10S. Yes, if you guys haven't heard about the 10S, and then uh, there is a special model, it's a slightly, ever so slightly updated version of the uh, EPL9 uh, being released in the UK at least, and uh, I'm not sure about any other countries, uh, but 10S is exclusively sold with, uh, I think, I'm not sure whether it's actually sold, uh, sold through John Lewis, or one of the retailers. I'm not entirely sure. So it's it's kind of like an exclusive model. You can't get it online through uh, through Olympus. So it's a special model. Uh, but technically, there isn't any difference whatsoever with uh, between the 10 or the 10s. They only added a filter, a, a an art filter to the list. So uh, so that's basically the the only difference between the 10 and the 10s. So if you got a 10 already, you're thinking 10s might be better. Don't worry about it. <laughs> it's exactly the same camera. They only added one out filter to it, and uh, they and then they add the S to it. <laughs> and then they finally it's the Olympus TG6, which is the tough little camera that I really enjoy using whenever I uh, go traveling. I always have it as my spare or kind of like a backup camera in my pocket, and uh, because you know sometimes you just don't know what's happened. Yeah, you know whether your memory card's filled, your battery died, something happened. I got a spare there, and this thing is it's a G-Shock, right? You know this thing's. Is crush proof, is drop proof, is step proof, you can go waterproof, you know, you can go uh, like, yeah, it, it's, it's indestructible in a little format. So I love the TG6. Um, so here we go, this is the result. Um, that you can see what are the top three cameras. First prize comes to the EM1 Mark III. Yes, so let me just bring that back up here. 
And uh, so EM1 Mark III won the popularity contest voted by you. And uh, so here we go. I have it right here. This really is something, right? And uh, I, I, I guess a lot of people were, you know, when this first came out, and uh, uh, I, I guess a lot of the, um, I would say a lot of people were a little bit underwhelmed about the, the whole kind of upgrade from the, between the Mark III and the Mark II, simply because, uh, 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 you know, there isn't a kind of significant technological breakthrough compared this and the Mark II. However, this is only superficial because when you are starting to use the camera and you realize that how much better this little guy compared to the Mark II, which why I have it right here. This is the silver version. So like I have it right here. It's all rigged up at the moment because I'm also testing another thing. <laughs> so, okay, so this is, uh, this is the Mark II right here. And uh, so, don't get me wrong, Mark II is really great, really fantastic. That's why it made it to the top three as well. But the Mark III, it isn't, it is really, really something. Right, let me tell you exactly what I do per, uh, professionally. If you don't know me uh, uh, too well, I do a lot of portraits, a lot of street portraits, environmental portraits, weddings alike. I shoot a lot of people. Hang on, that doesn't sound right. I photograph a lot of people. I don't shoot people, right? I, sh I photograph a lot of them. And uh, I am, um, it. I think the upgrade, uh, uh, especially from the enhanced portrait mode, the eye detection is phenomenal. Compared to the Mark II, even compared to the M1X, it's, it's cool, it's great. And uh, and it, the thing is, it works with CAF, Continuous Autofocus, if you don't know what it is. And uh, it, it really just opened up another uh, 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 creative angle for me. I can do a lot more uh, dynamic shots when I can ask the subject to move around. And uh, if, I, if I'm using a very shallow depth of field lens, uh, such as the 45 1.2 or even the 1.8, uh, sometimes maybe even the 40 to 152.8, uh, if I shoot it in the longer end, that means I've got quite a shallow depth of field depending on the distance. Uh, so having that ability to track the subject and nail the eyes all the time is cool. Previously, what I had to do is I would have to use CAF. You know, CAF in since Mark II is already quite good, right? Um, especially after firmware 3.0. But uh, what I'm saying is, uh, I would have to fix a location, fix a, a focusing point for the CAF, and that means I would try to track my subject with that focus point, you know, manually. So I have to kind of move around with the uh, with, with my subject together to get that kind of tracking working. And uh, the only reason I say that though, is that, uh, that despite all the advancement about, uh, among all the Olympus cameras, there's one thing, there's one thing that still, I think, I think this is personal, you know, this is personal. I think it's not as great as some other competition is the tracking, you know, um, in the menu, uh, you can select single AF, yeah, which is normal. And then you have the CAF and then you will have the CAF with tracking, yeah, TR, yeah, that's the mode you, uh, that that uh, uh, means is tracking. So you can highlight a certain subject. You, you then you will get the green box highlighting the subject, and supposedly this green box will follow, you know, that subject when it's moving left and right, forward and backward, right. This tracking isn't as reliable as the CAF on its own, which is actually quite strange, right? <laughs> to me, I have no idea. They managed to nail it with the AI subject tracking with the M1X. They managed to nail it with the M1 uh, Mark III's enhanced eye, uh, eye and face detection tracking. That, that is working fine. You know, as soon as, uh, as soon as the camera sees the face, it tracks it, that's fine. And what I don't understand, why they can't do it with the tracking, the actual dedicated tracking mode. <laughs> so to me, that is one of the uh, autofocus modes that I, I, I was least used you know, among all the modes. I, you know, I use manual focus, I use single focus, I use CAF. The only mode that I don't really use is the uh, uh, CAF with tracking. That's the only mode that I don't quite use. Uh, so there you go. And uh, so that's that's why I'm saying the, the, the uh, the E1 Mark III is phenomenal in that sense because of what I do personally. I'm not entirely sure if you don't photograph a lot of people, that mode may not be uh, uh, kind of like a, a screamer for you. And uh, But for me, for people who love to photograph a lot of people, and uh, especially if you want to use a lot of uh, 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 shallow depth of field lenses, and if you want to do subject isolations, 
um, even even if you shoot deeper depth of field, you still want to nail the uh, nail the eyes, you know, like really sharp and focused. Um, and this thing's really really cool. Compared to the Mark II, you can't really compare because the Mark II doesn't have quite doesn't quite to that level, it's, it's, doesn't, it's just not the same level of the kind of eye tracking. Um, that it sees the eyes, it does it, but only when the subject is fairly close to the um, to the uh, the actual camera itself, or put it in other words, if the subject is kind of fill the frame, uh, frame quite, you know, almost fill the entire frame, then the camera will start to see the eyes. So that's kind of no use for me. I don't always do headshots. Um, the, uh, so if I want to do half body, maybe even like when the subject's moving slightly further away, uh, that's when the Mark II can't see the face uh, or see the eyes for that matter. And then I will just have to use the uh, uh, smaller focusing point and trying to nail the face. Uh, it's, it's accurate, don't get me wrong, it's really accurate, but you just have to learn and appreciate the what the system can do for you and you know where the limit is and you try and exploit it. But the Mark III has definitely changed that game for me and I can now kind of rely on the AF alone just to, just on the face detection. So that is really awesome. And what else on the uh, Mark III? And I know a lot of you actually shoot a lot of uh, uh, Astro stuff as well. You know, he's got the, uh, got the new Starry Sky AF. That mode I don't use often, but for those who do, once again, this is another really cool feature, right? Just like live composite, uh, live ND. Yes, this this guy also have light, uh, live ND as well. So it's quite a lot being packed in this tiny body. Um, and this is also exactly why the pricing between the EM1 Mark III and the EM1X is so close because it's almost, almost have the same features as the EM1X. And to be quite honest, for what I do, like like I said, I, I photograph a lot of people, um, the, the EM1X doesn't have that enhanced eye and face detection like the Mark III has. So that means that for if I have to choose a camera purely just to photograph people, I would actually choose the EM1 Mark III over the EM1X. And uh, uh, even though I do take the EM1X for my shoot a lot because it's just rugged and I know it's reliable. And, uh, and, and this EM1 Mark III is relatively new. It came out just earlier this year. And uh, because of lockdown, I haven't really been shooting a lot with this guy. So at the moment, I'm still gonna use the EM1X for all my professional shoot just because I know I can rely on it. So this is it, that's why I can totally understand why you choose the EM1 Mark III as the most popular or the, the top the top guy, right? <laughs> this is the top guy. So good, good stuff, good choice as well. So who's who came second? Let me just have a look at who came second now. And um, let's go back to the graph here. The second place comes to, wow, look at that. That is awesome, isn't it? Did you see that? The second place come to EM5 Mark II. <laughs> right, I have it right here. Let me just bring it over. And here we go. Oh, gosh, I'm hot now. You can see I'm sweating. <laughs> All right, okay, I did cut my hair myself. So uh, sorry about my, my uh, uh, inexperienced uh, 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 hair cutting. You know, all I do just a clipper just to shave my head, really. Uh, the <laughs> well, what can you do when there's no barbers around? Right, okay, here we go. This is the EM5 Mark II. Do I need to say more about this camera? Possibly not, because this is the camera that changed me. You know, I, you saw my, you saw my, uh, 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 all my previous videos in the last couple of uh, couple couple of months. I mentioned this guy quite a few times already. Even in my live stream, I talked about the EM5, how important it is, how significant it is for Olympus, and uh, this is this is great. This is a great great camera, and even today, I think it's still worth the money. Even when you say that, oh, it's it only has a crappy 16 megapixel it hasn't got 4k videos blah 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 yeah no this is a cool camera yeah trust me if you're a photographer if you don't need to print like a war size photo i bet most of you don't print a war size photo you know myself included i don't print war size photo this guy is way more than enough than you ever ever need and now you can get it at a good price, you know, in some stores that they're, they're having on sales. Um, uh, it, it's cool. Well, first of all, I would say that there's a debate between plastic and metal body, yeah? And I know the argument there. And uh, I personally, I don't uh, have a problem using a, a plastic bodies, you know, 
let's call it the polycarbonate. You know, they are quite strong. They're they're not the normal plastic. They're, it's very, very tough, to be honest. But the EM5 Mark II is a very, very strong camera. You know, it's, uh, it's, it is fully metal, like a, like I said, and many people are still appreciating what it is and what it's built like. And uh, you can't really fault in, in terms of build quality. This thing is solid. Um, that it feels good because it's got that metal cool feel when you when you leave it for a bit and then you just when you hold it you got that kind of metallic feel to it your in, in your hand and it feels a little bit of hefty you know like quite a bit of weight to it even though in this small size um, so it it is a great camera the IBIS may not be as strong as the latest EM5 Mark III it hasn't got hybrid AF uh, uh, so on paper it may not actually look as impressive as the latest Mark III, which I also have right here. This is the Mark III, which is a is a beast for the size, right? Is is a beast for the size. But like I said, if you if you don't need to do tracking stuff, if you don't shoot a lot of moving subjects, if you don't shoot videos too much, you know, like if you don't shoot 4K, let's put it that way, you don't shoot 4K, this is actually very, very capable. You know, and the color it's a typical color, uh, Olympus color. You can't fault the color science with uh, with Olympus camera. It's just phenomenal. Uh, so you got the you got everything you need. A camera that is rocket built, fully weather sealed, gorgeous color, in a very small package, fully metal, and then it's got ibis and everything that you ever ever need from a camera, and you can take it everywhere. And with the look to die for, right? This thing, I think it looks absolutely gorgeous, this thing here. Look at that, look at that. This so, come on, focus. Oh yeah, forgot, it's not autofocus, shit. <laughs> oh, damn it, I'll give it away. Right, okay, um, so there you go. This is the EM5 Mark II. This is second place. I am actually quite shocked. I, I would have thought that you guys would have voted for the Mark III instead of the Mark II, but a lot of you guys have to obviously still love the Mark II, so you think the Mark II is still a very desirable camera that is awesome so let's move on to our final last place number three uh, let's go back to the chart once again so number three which isn't surprising at all it is the Olympus OMD EM1 Mark II there we go there we go right let me just bring it over here so I've got a lot of stuff here uh, this is this is the problem, yeah. With my wide-angle lens that I'm testing at the moment, it's so wide. I have to kind of juggle something a little bit, and uh, because I don't want you to see everything in here. <laughs> and uh, but you, you can still see bits of it in my in my uh, in my uh, on my table here, just just because how wide this lens is. And you can judge it yourself, yeah. Does it look sharp? It looks really sharp, and this thing is cool, and. Everything is straight. There's no distortion that I can tell at the moment. It's just phenomenal. I think it's really cool. So you have to stay tuned for my video about what this really is. And it's coming very, very soon as well. So anyway, let's go back to our, our chat, right? In one Mark II. Yeah. Okay. Not only this guy here has a special place in my heart. And it's a special camera. This thing brought me to Michael Forthard professionally. This guy basically single-handedly manage to film everything and produce every video that we have in this channel up until middle of next year uh, last year and uh, uh it, it, it is cool it's a great camera is a great tool for any photographers you know uh, who really wanted something that is dependable uh is rugged and has a lot of pro features and since the firmware update this thing is a beast to shoot with uh the latest update is even cooler you know it's got a slightly better stabilization if you use it for video shooting and uh, uh, personally I would say that I couldn't quite tell the difference maybe uh, just a little bit of the jelly from a wide angle lens is gone or not completely gone but it's kind of like a little bit better so any improvement is good so for me it's a great 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 camera it's a workhorse for those who don't know me I shoot this uh, not this particular model here I had the black one the black one is uh, completely better now the black one um, that camera I basically uh, shot about 100 to 150,000 uh, 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 photographs a year and that's how much I've been shooting um, just because I, I you know I, I do a lot of photo shoots uh, through the year uh, I have a lot of weddings and I go to documentary projects and stuff and I film with that thing as well so I, I use the mark II 
really to the max there, both for stills and for videos. Um, and it, it's holding up, you know, even though that I kind of not using that battered camera anymore because it's so, so used up. <laughs> and then uh, it, it, I just worry that if I take it to a job, it may fail me. And this is exactly what I mentioned to you about, uh, to you guys about uh, being professional. I need a reliable gear. And the only reason and when I replace my camera is because I need the reliability back. You know, I when a camera has been so used, you know, and, uh, uh, and you know the shutter ca shutter life isn't there anymore. Is we're kind of reaching the end of the road, and you just have to be sure that you don't fail. You know, uh, during a commercial shoot when when your client paying you to, for a job you know you don't want to stop in the middle of it and just say oh sorry my camera just gone you know you might have a second camera you just pick it out but you interrupt the flow so you don't want that so um uh, that's why i haven't been using it now and it's uh, just sitting there uh the kind of waiting to be donated <laughs> in fact actually my friend wanted it uh, so i i agreed to give it to her to to you know, just to practice photography, so she's gonna use that to as a as a kind of like a uh, beginner, even though it's not a beginner camera, but yeah, use use it to practice photography. <laughs> okay, so that is it. This is Mark two, and um, like I said, depending on what you shoot, most people would be happy with the Mark two, uh, uh, even though the Mark three is definitely to me is technically quite quite a bit more advanced than the Mark two. But the Mark II is definitely capable for a lot of stuff that you do uh, 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 or whatever you want to do with uh, a camera. And this thing can provide that uh, functionalities, uh, reliability, and also uh, uh, the features that you really need to capture those photos. So that is really cool. And you can see that I'm rigged up here at the moment. So uh, uh, I can kind of tell you, I mean, that the 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 things that I'm doing now is testing a a gimbal. So if you guys want to see my gimbal stuff and uh, which is coming up in the new year uh so this is uh the crane 2s that i'm testing at the moment i don't have to lie about this or hide it, hide anything from you guys because the crane 2s is already out uh, so i don't need to worry about telling you guys about it so it is i'm using the mark ii because mark ii is compatible with the gun gimbal crane 2. uh yeah it's cool it's one of the few electronic gimbals that allow, that is has a, uh, the what I call it, the compatibility with Olympus cameras, because DJI doesn't have that. Mozart doesn't really have the uh, uh, compatibility with Olympus cameras. Zhiyun is kind of the only camera out there that has the capability to talk to the camera. But there is a but, but you have to wait for my review uh, review to, to talk about it. So, but if you won't have any uh, questions, you won't ask me about the gimbal and how it works with the uh, Olympus camera, do find me a PM and I'll be able to answer you accordingly. Okay. So there we go. So hopefully that concludes the top three. But let's see why some other camera doesn't make the list. And I'm actually a little bit surprised though. Let me just uh, go back to the list here. So hopefully you guys are happy with the top three cameras. The EM1 Mark III, the EM5 Mark II come in second place. And then the EM1 Mark II. Phenomenal. So if you look at it, the next one up is the Mark III, EM5 Mark III that came fourth which is not too bad. It's quite close to um, the, the M5 Mark II, to be quite honest. They are kind of almost like neck to neck, you know, and uh, when I was looking at the uh, 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 the pose, you know, like every every day I check every day, and then when I see the number, you know, it's kind of like going like this. <laughs> but I didn't, I didn't count the number uh, uh, Kind of from two from twelve o'clock today, you know. I did last time I looked at the number was the uh, was at twelve p.m. Uh, today. So this graph is relatively up to date, uh, but it was going like this up and down, up and down like a yo-yo. And somehow the Mark II made it to the uh, to the top three and not the Mark Four. Uh, so not the Mark Three, but I love the Mark Three. I have to say, um, like I mentioned, it is a polycarbonate or plastic fantastic body. Uh, people would also talk about it you know it's just not as rugged um they have problem with the horseshoe mounts you know everybody talk about the horseshoe mount you know if you mount something heavy it will crack it and things like that right i need to clarify that though i do need to clarify that if anyone mount a tripod plate here right and put a mat like gigantic lens in front of it you are doing something wrong mate yep you, you're not supposed to use this little thread here to hold the the you know something heavy right in the front in, in front of the camera you're not supposed to do that if you do you are risking damaging your camera you know the tripod mount 
I don't care whether it's going to be plastic or, in fact, metal. People have shown photos of a cracked bottom here from the, from the plastic body, but have you seen a bend? I'm talking about bend bottom from a metal EM5. You haven't, I bet. I've seen photos of them, and I have seen it from uh, Olympus reports. Uh, when people use it wrong, and that's when you get into trouble, there is a reason why some of these heavier lenses have a tripod mount. That is the reason for it. You are supposed to use that mount to do things, right? And uh, it has a weight limit for anything. This plastic is actually not completely plastic. It's linked to the metal, ch uh, metal chassis inside the body here. You can't really see. So you are bending the metal still inside. So when you crack it, of course, you're going to see the crack but that is only superficial from the outside. It's still linked to the internal, you know, internal chest, uh, internal chassis. So what you, whatever you're damaging, you're actually damaging the entire body itself. So therefore, I'm telling you now, <laughs> those people are saying that, you know, this is weaker. No, it isn't weaker at all, you know. And uh, so don't, don't really think that is a problem with the EM5 Mark III uh, with a polycarbonate body. It's no... Is no less uh, strong compared to the Mark II. is is exactly the same in terms of weight capacity. Uh, but when people just do it, I don't know whether whether they are just using it wrong or they just intentionally trying to damage uh, the Olympus reputations. I'm not entirely sure, but there you go. This is a user error from from my point of view. If you don't use the tripod collar from the lens, and yeah, nothing can be said, you know. And uh, so be sure that you use it accordingly. Using uh, how manufacturer are asking you to do with the uh, with the equipment don't try to force it to do something because yeah look it's a slim camera how much weight can you take from these things there's a reason for it okay but anyway let's go back to the mark 3 i was talking about the mark 3 right the mark 3 is a great camera because it is essentially a shrunk em1 mark 2 there's no denying it if you look at the feature look at the the guts of it if you look at the the caf and all the hybrid af system the the ibis it really is a shrunk EM1 Mark II, but well, why not? <laughs> the EM1 Mark II is a phenomenal camera. Like I said already, it made it to the top top three, right? You know, the Mark II. And uh, so it's a great camera, but now it's been repackaged into a much smaller body. At least they don't give you the same body, right? You know, <laughs> and uh, so this is great. The Mark II, uh, sorry, the Mark, you know what? These numbers start to get annoying now. Start to get, get my head messed up. So the EM5 Mark III is really, really awesome. And I've been shooting this uh, this year whenever I go vlogging or when I do things because the AF is now definitely way more uh, capable. Uh, and if people who want to travel a lot, to do a lot of travel filming, travel uh, hybrid stuff, yeah, I'm talking about both stills and videos, I don't think you, you know, it will be anything wrong with the Mark III here. It's actually better than the EM1 Mark II because of its size. And it's lighter, smaller. It fit into your bag. Doesn't make your bag bulky. Even though, yeah, you might think, oh, the Mark, the Mark II isn't that much bigger compared to the Mark III, uh, the EM5 Mark III. Well, every little helps. Right? And even look at the grip here. Yes, the grip is comfortable, but it's a lot chunkier. And the the the, the EM5 Mark III grip is definitely a lot slimmer. And it means that you can put it in your shoulder bag, put it in your luggage. You don't hold up a lot of uh, 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 space. Couple with sub, uh, you know, some smaller lenses like this one here. This lower lens is just so tiny, right? And this is the seven point five f two. This is so tiny. This is this. Look, look at this thing here. Just almost like a toy. But that's what I'm saying. If you are into like a uh, uh, proper Michael Forth shooting experience, but with like small stuff. Yeah, 25 1.8 here is tiny and you got a 45 1.8 and then you have this 17 1.8 all these premium lenses there 1.8 premium lenses are phenomenally cool and small look at that this is the 17 um i love them i love all these little lenses there uh that's why every time when i go travel with the family i would take my travel kit yeah which including the m uh, the m5 mark III and a whole bunch of um, little lenses there i can fit them all in a small bag and that's what I like about it. When you go out traveling, you know, when you walk a lot, when you walk miles and miles every single day, uh, if you do tracking, for instance, if you want to do a hike up the mountains, this is a godsend, you know, in terms of the, the, the weight saving, the space saving, you can pack a lot of other stuff in your backpack. You can pack wa more water, you can pack more clothes, you know, pack, uh, pack more snacks or food or anything you need for, for the day. You know, that is really, really cool. For people who, who, 
really don't understand that, you know, because they are either new to the photography scene or uh, haven't really tried Maker Four Third. They really wouldn't get it. You know, they really wouldn't understand the benefit of having a smaller system. And to be quite frank, when you do when you go traveling, how often do you really need? Do you really need? Think about it. We do really need the low light capability or the shallow depth of field. Yeah, if people are using those as an argument, because I, I always disagree with those things. And uh, but no, you don't. Right. You know, you have fantastic IBIS. You don't technically you don't need uh, too much of a tripod works. You know, obviously tripod is still useful for extended uh, uh, exposure photography, like night scenes or astrophotography, something like that. Yeah, that you still need to use a tripod. But generally, if you go traveling, just go and see a city, going to see uh, uh, another place, another village, something like that. You don't really need too much of it. And you're photographing a lot of the sceneries, you're photographing a lot of the landscapes, you're photographing a lot of the uh, documentary kind of stuff, you know, street scenes and maybe village scenes. You need, you actually need depth of field. And for that, this is the perfect system. What, what more can you do for it? You know, you, it, it's also, don't forget, it's also weather sealed, the EM5. And then and that means you can actually do a lot of it, even though the premium lenses on, but you can get the pro lenses that are weather sealed. I know what you're going to say. You're going to say that Olympus should release 1.8 1, 1. lenses with the weather ceiling. <laughs> well, frankly, with the new mothership, uh, I'm hoping that that will come true. And uh, you never know. You never say never. I'm hoping to see some new lenses. Uh, uh, that will be in line with what you guys want as well. Because I think it makes sense to have some of the uh, uh, 1.8 lenses, uh, maybe even F2, that are um, uh, weather sealed. So... I, I like I said before, if they're going to re-release some of the 1.8 lenses, which including weather sealing, and uh, it will make it a little bit bigger, no doubt. You know, you will make it bigger. So if you want to keep it the same size, they may have to sacrifice a little bit in terms of aperture size. So they may have to bring it down to f2. You know, and uh, uh, if they want to keep the same size here, yeah, if People don't mind a little bit bigger, so they may be able to do that. But I'm just saying maybe because I don't know. You know, I'm I'm just kind of speculating things that I am I have no knowledge about, have no information about, and uh, and obviously the the Olympus is still kind of in transition at the moment, and everything is still being moving around, juggling around at the moment. So I can't really tell you exactly uh, 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 what the the current release maps uh, uh, it is or release dates for any of the products at the moment even though we have the roll map that you may have seen already uh, so it's, it's quite difficult to predict things at the moment although having said that they already agree that things are still coming out they're still going to follow the plan that they have which I have no knowledge about so exactly what it is what it entails I'm not entirely sure so that will have to be wait and see so let's let's see what that is then um okay so what's the next camera let's have a look at that but before i do that let me answer some question i'm going to see something popping up let's see what the ca next camera is so the top fours are here already the next one is whoo em10 mark 3 right okay i'm going to come to em10 mark 3 in a minute let's see some of you guys and see what you guys are talking about um okay right First of all, Hando, uh, you talk about EM5 Mark II is a legend build quality. is far superior than the EM5 Mark III. <laughs> right, I kind of answered that already, right? And uh, it's kind of like a debate between plastic and metal. There are different preferences. And, uh, I, I can tell you that the Mark III is lighter than the Mark II because, yeah, of course, because of the, uh, the, 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 the plastic build. But like I also said, the, the plastic camera isn't all that bad to be quite honest I know being an Olympus guy and if you've been using Olympus cameras a lot yeah for a long time you would probably being spoiled by the build quality of Olympus you know product in general you know like as if you look at all the early earlier uh, cameras like the e, uh, like the uh, uh, EP1 you know the EPL3 they have a lot of metal components there which is actually quite surprising from uh, 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 considering they are beginner level stuff and uh, or at least like amateur level ca cameras not professional so they use a lot of metal components there so they have been doing it for a long time and that's kind of like a, 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 a tradition almost for a lot of the uh, uh, Olympus users they, they kind of expect everything from then on is going to be metal the fact is they could do it 
and uh, and but obviously there was two reasons there for uh, uh, for the reason why they move it from metal to plastic. They are genuine reason. Well, first of all, I'm not going to lie. It's definitely cost saving, and that's no that's that, that's that's I think that's that's the 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 one true reason is cost saving because metal obviously is more expensive than plastic. But secondly, it's also a genuine reason is weight saving. Because you want to continue trying to lighten the, the, the actual system. System can always go bigger and fatter and heavier. But it's harder to make them lighter. So this is one reason why they use the plastic. And I think it's not bad. Because coming from the background that I have. You know, I've been using cameras and all sorts of cameras for the last 20 years. And uh, I've seen metal, like full on metal uh, 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 cameras. And, uh, and also have plastic cameras uh, from Canon. You know, like uh, even... You think about Canon, you think a lot of the cameras are actually metals? Not really. A lot of them are actually plastic, and uh, and there's no problem with it, especially during the film day, uh, film era where when I, where I grew up with. Uh, my EOS 50E, my EOS 3, EOS 3 especially. EOS 3 is is basically like a second in line compared to the EM1, uh, so EOS 1 cameras. So EOS 1 in Canon is the kind of like a top professional camera. Then they have the EOS 3, which is kind of the next line down. That camera is fully plastic. Yeah, well, the outside shell, just like the EM5. And uh, they have the magnesium chassis inside the plastic body. Uh, so there's no problem with it. You know, I, I have used EOS 3 for, for a few years and I have no problem whatsoever. I dropped it, it scratched it. In some cases, I saw some other people, they have cracked it a little bit, but that's no different to metal, right? Metal, you can still bend, dent it, and uh, uh, it's, it's superficial, right? It's, it's nothing too dangerous. And uh, if you really want to replace the body, it's actually cheaper to replace the plastic shell than a metal chassis, right? And uh, So in terms of servicing, if you really worry about it, you can always go back to Canon or, you know, back in the days uh, to, to change the, the broken components. And uh, it, it's always going to be cheaper to replace something that is plastic than, than metal. So I don't see a problem having the, uh, the, the plastic body camera because, yeah, it's lighter. It may not feel as great as the metal, but I think... I think it's okay. It's okay. I, I mean, I think people may be a little bit exaggerated in in some ways, but I, I get your point though, because I do personally, yeah, personally, I do like metal, uh, but I don't mind uh, uh, operating a plastic camera, full stop. And uh, Thomas here, I, I'm cheap dinosaur, and I love my EM10 Mark II. Well, EM10 Mark II didn't, too, didn't do too bad though, isn't it? Is uh, the, looking at the, the chart here, where is it? So that's the the M1 Mark, the M10 Mark II. Look, it's actually quite high up. It's not too bad. Almost as good as the M1X. So that shows how popular the M10 is. So uh, it's actually pretty good, right? So I love it. You know, I I think the M10 Mark II is a phenomenal camera, judging by what it is and how it's built together. It's a metal one. You know, it's another metal camera that we that we had in the Olympus lineup. The M10 Mark II is legendary. It's, it may only have 60 megapixels. It may only have limited amount of pro features, but it's still a great camera. Like I said in my um, uh, slow cooker video, who, who hasn't seen my uh, uh, slow cooker videos? When I talk about it, you know, I really meant it word by word. A camera is a camera for any photographer. As long as you can take photo with, as long as you can control the shutter speed, aperture, ISO, that really is all you need. And when you flick it to manual mode, the M mode, you know, like you, you, pr you practically have a very capable camera. That's it. You know, you don't really have to worry about too much about all the other stuff unless you are really going to use it or even learning how to use it. And uh, so this is why I think uh, uh, Olympus cameras are definitely really pack a lot inside. And uh, uh, to to most in most cases, I think people are are just overwhelmed by how much stuff they have. You know, like uh, uh, a lot of reviewers talking about um, um, Olympus camera in general. If you look at a lot of the cat magazines and, and and online, they always said Olympus menu is is too complicated. Um, I do agree to certain extents, but disagree at the same time, all because we have a lot of features in the cameras. Yeah, 
we have loads of stuff in in camera like it, 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 it's just crazy either how much stuff we have in camera it just it's just phenomenal uh that each one of the features can be adjusted can be changed and that's why you have a freaking menu that's so long <laughs> you know if you don't have features i mean you can have just one page right you look at the leica cameras leica cameras are so simple because they don't have features they all they can only just adjust a couple of things that's why they only have like literally two pages there is not, nothing else to it uh so if you don't want a complicated menu then don't throw so many features into it. But then, if you, if Olympus did that, and then you guys would complain, oh, that's got no features on. It it's quite hard to satisfy everybody, right? <laughs> you know, I want so many features in the pack into the camera, but I want a very simplified menu, which doesn't quite work out, does it? If you have a look at the numbers and how much, what sort of uh, customization you can do the cameras and things, yeah, Olympus is not Olympus also known for the customization uh, customization for the cameras, right? All the buttons can be customized, features can be customized. If you want all that, you need the menu to support it. You know, full stop. <laughs> and uh, so it's it's quite hard to to really please everybody these days, and uh, it's impossible, really impossible. I find that this world has gone crazy. And, uh, they want too many things, but they don't realize how how many things they actually do need for for that type of photography. Uh, uh, you know, that's why, like, you know, for people who hasn't really seen my slow cooker videos. And uh, yeah, you should check that out. It's actually pretty cool. <laughs> I think I made a good videos. <laughs> okay, Tapa. Hello there. I hate what uh, they did to the M5 3 build, and my opinion was a mistake. <laughs> and um, well, like, like I said, I, I can, I can understand. I can totally understand why, why you know, a lot of you reacting to the uh, the plastic built cameras are not as good as the metal built uh, uh, cameras. I can totally understand that. Uh, like, like I said, I'm not trying to defend Olympus in any way. Just because I've seen plastic cameras like like a lot, you know, since the the, the start of my career, or even the the start of my photographic journey, I've seen so many plastic cameras in my life, and uh, and I really never have any problems with them. And uh, some of them are expensive. Some of them are expensive. I had the Fuji Fuji uh, six four five. Yeah, this is a very expensive uh, medium format film cameras. They were like 800, 900 pounds, you know, even in the second hand market. Uh, uh, they, it's fully plastic. That thing is fully plastic. And I'm talking about the chassis as well. The chassis is plastic. You know, that's a full plastic medium format camera that costs bloody 900 quid in the used market. And uh, there you go. It's, it's not really a problem. You know, it's just being how you see it. For me, all cameras to me are tools. You know, as long as they don't break or it or disintegrate in the air <laughs> and for me they're fine you know they're, they're okay uh so i i'm, I'm happy i'm happy with uh, uh, uh as long as the camera can perform to the level that i want it to and that's all i need and that's what I, uh, that's all i ask for and uh see handle here let's see what else you're saying here and uh hando is saying that em53 is closer to the om1 which I'm still using. Its build quality is was a mistake. I don't know what's going on. Let me say, how many of you are, pl are complaining about a plastic body, mate? <laughs> okay. Um, Ultra MUC Ultra Muck. Okay. Uh, there is just something about the sensor of the EM5 and the EM5 Mark II. The way, the way it renders the black and white just looks like film. I sold two of my uh, EM1, EM Mark II because I just did not use them enough. All right. You're quite right there, actually. I do personally like how um, uh, the EM5 pictures uh, renders. It's actually very, very cool. Mark 1 and Mark, Mark, 1 and Mark 2 both are very, very similar. Let me try to find an image so I can show it to you. Uh, it is actually very very good uh, I have it right here I have a couple of really good photos here which I can show you straight away um, one second when you have so much stuff in the computer it's always quite hard to see <laughs> right nearly there right oh where's my photo there let's go back to it Right, okay, this photo here, let me just bring it in here. Right, guys, this one is made from my EM5 Mark II. And uh, it, it's phenomenal, this, uh, this, this photo, how it creates, it's so filming. It's almost like film. 
and uh, and especially coming from a guy like myself who who shot a lot of film in the past, uh, I, I can definitely appreciate how the EM five actually renders the images. Uh, but this is actually quite common in on, in the Olympus world. You know, I think to do with the lenses and how the color works together is it, kind of working tandem each, uh, of each other. It's it just generally giving a very pleasing tones and pleasing uh, 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 aesthetic, you know, uh, for, for every images. Uh, it's, it's cool. You know, look, just look at this one here. It's just phenomenally cool. It, look, it looks almost like shot with the uh, the Fuji uh, uh, Rila 100. You know, that's a film that I used to, to shoot a lot. It's just so cool about things. I'll show you another black and white photos here. You can actually see that. Um, let me just get another black and white photo here. Uh, 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 right. Well, this is the wedding photo, but it's, uh, it's also shot with the EM5. Okay, I am right here. Ooh, ooh. So, yeah, you can see that here that the the, the black and white photo is uh, definitely very, um, almost like shooting with the Ilford film, right? You know, it's, it's a, lot, a little bit down to the to the processing itself but it does give you a very good base to work with your photo uh, the uh, a lot of people worry about noise you know I actually think noise in the Olympus sensor are very organic and it does look like film grains which is what I love about Olympus cameras not the very harsh blocky things that you see from uh, from some other cameras especially from Canon I hate Canon noises Canon Canon's noise are horrible <laughs> and then uh, 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 so when I switched to Olympus I remember first thing I noticed was the noise patterns from Olympus cameras. The noise from Olympus cameras definitely way more filmic uh, compared to uh, uh, other brands that I've tried. Uh, I love it and then uh, and that's why I think whatever you shoot, whatever ISO you shoot with the Olympus camera, you have a very good base to process your photo. And if you really, really worry about noise these days, we have a new friend on the, uh, 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 called DxO Photo Lab 4, right? You know, if you guys haven't tried that, I'm telling you, and that's my favorite denoising thing now. You know, this uh, this this uh, new Photo Lab uh, Deep Prime thing, it seriously, it's so sick. You know, like you chuck a ISO 4000, 6400 files into that uh, 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 the the program, let the magic works, and it comes out with like a like a uh, 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 ISO 400 or 640 shot from a 6400 ISO down to like a uh, ISO 640 you know a low low ish you know uh, uh, iso setting that's how crazy the new uh, deep prime uh, 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 noise reduction is if you haven't tried it i have the link in my description actually and uh, 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 you can you can go and download the uh, the the uh, the free trial is free you know you can try it out you know if you if you want it uh, i think i think they are having a 30% discount at the moment uh, something like that for christmas so yeah it's good it's good saving as well if you want to try it it really, it really is. If you are a Michael Four Third user, if you're Michael Four Third guy who shoot a lot of low light stuff, seriously, this thing will give a whole new life to all your raw files. You know, I'm telling you, it's really, really crazy. And uh, for people that I recommended who tried it, uh, if you go to see the uh, see the world group that, on, uh, that I have on Facebook, see some of the images and uh, the especially the uh, indoor low light high ISO images that they shot with uh, the live band singing and things like that. See how clean those images are. They were processed with the deep prime and uh, amazing. I I'm telling you, I actually so curious to see how much he has improved my images. Images. I went back to some of my older wedding photos. Uh, let me see if I can show you one here. And uh, I may not have the processed files here, but I just want to show you that file that I looked at, uh, uh, that I processed or reprocessed just to show it. This is the one. Okay. Right. This is the photo that I, I had, I reprocessed just to check out the, the, uh, the actual, uh, noise reduction. Uh, it's crazy. It, it was really crazy. This particular shot here, if I remember correctly, uh, this one was shot in ISO, um, uh, ISO 6400. I think this is because that, that place was super dim, really, really, really dark. And, uh, I would just really, Trying to catch the light from their faces from the uh, one of the uh, color spotlight, um, it is phenomenal. It's the, the the noise reduction made it almost like a brand new image. The only thing that I need to do now is uh, if I want to transition from Lightroom to to DxO is to work out the colors because each processing software does render the file slightly differently. 
um, not only be, uh, just the noise noise stuff, uh, but also the color, how they interpret colors from the sensors are also very different. Lightroom see things slightly different to DxO, uh, so is Capture One and On One and all the other softwares that you use uh, or you seen around in, in, on the market. They all have their own interpretation when you know when it comes to color signs. So. Uh, you just have to kind of work out the transition there if you if, if you want to switch over from Lightroom or whatever to DxO this would be the first thing I would try to do just to manipulate colors trying to get a preset uh, so you can work your file the way you, you used to with other programs that you are currently using that's the only way I would suggest if you are going to switch over and of course DxO is it's not a subscription based model so you can just buy the software and just use it for life you don't have to worry about it uh, that's that's the beauty of it and unless you are just uh, kind of being forced, like myself, being forced to continue subscribing to bloody Adobe, and that's another thing, you know. Don't make, ugh, yeah, never, never mind. I hate to pay Adobe, but I'm still using it. <laughs> okay. Um, we went, hello there, and I think the 75 1.8 is not small enough. <laughs> well, it is a bigger lens, though. Don't forget, it is a it is a 75 millimeter lens. It's not. It's not a 25. It's not a 50 is not a 45 75 millimeter lens is always going to be bigger i have an 85 mil lens in my in my um for my canon days i have the 85 it is big because it it needs to be that big the front element has to be that much bigger you know and uh, especially for 1.8 aperture imagine if it's the 1.2 it would be even bigger and larger and heavier uh it's, it's still physics at the end of the day you can't really change the way it is uh, uh, how how it's built because it, there's so many calculations you can do to the ca uh, to determine how big the lens should be a 75 is i think it's actually a decent size i wouldn't say big for what it is equally i wouldn't say it's small and uh, but it, i think it's, it's definitely not on the big side for sure um let's see that uh oh we went use the kit through the music festival last week and really appreciate Michael Forther. <laughs> yeah. And Hendo, talking about monochrome. Penap is a beast up to this date, but the drawback is that it's non weather sealed. You see my thumbnail on my Penap? Uh, I I shot in the rain, I shot it in snow. I don't have problem using it in wet situations. But I also I said, was it you or someone actually messaged me asking me about this very question? Can I use my pen in in the rain or in wet situation? Or how should I maintain the camera? Right, there is a trick. Well, not a trick, but it's common sense really. Um, whenever I use my cameras in the rain, right, whether it's a fully wet, well, unless it's Mark One, uh, the Mark One, uh, sorry, the E One Two or E One Three or the E One X, unless it's these three cameras, these three cameras, all the other cameras, including my E M Five, Mark Three, and Mark Two, even though these are weather suit cameras. I do have a standard procedures to, to operate them. When you're walking around in the field, when it's raining, first thing I use my hand, if you're carrying the camera, like, like even where, when you're on the neck or something like that, I use my hand to kind of, I always hold it like this, and tilt the, the, the lens down. So I am actually blocking as much rain as possible. So that's regardless what camera I use. It's kind of like a, my general practice. Reason why I cover the EVF so that like the EVF is not having this horrible water droplet in there. So whenever you want to see something, it's just not there. I'm trying to protect it. And secondly, I just trying to cover it as much as possible, even though it's weather sealed, because I know the IPX rating is meant to uh, uh, to say how much, uh, how long you can resist water to a certain level. So this is how IPX rating is. It's not when you have an IPX one doesn't mean that. You can just chuck it in the rain, just leave it outside for, you know, for for three days. It doesn't work like that. If it's the if the rain is is consistent, you can only hold it for so long, and that's what IPX rating is. And uh, so, that means that these guys will eventually let water in, even though it has seals. So that's no different to a camera that has no seal. And uh, the good thing about Olympus camera is because it's so tightly built, you know, the build quality is so high and there's the gap is actually very, very, very tiny. And uh, that means that it's almost weather sealed. And uh, it just it just that doesn't resist to, let's say, dust or, or very fine moistures. And that's what is, is not very good. So if you take your camera to a very humid country, 
that's when you may have problem. And uh, uh, but having said that, you need to climatize your cameras to to be able to use uh, in those situations. Once it's climatized, you shouldn't have a problem with it. But Overall, my, my point is, you know, whenever you go into rainy situation, always cover it, whether it's whether it's a, a weather seal or not. You only take up your camera to your eye level whenever you see something that you want to photograph or you want to photograph straight away. Then you pull it up and just take a couple of shots and then you do the same thing again, till down and cover it. And that's what I do all the time. And even you get when you get wet, you as soon as you go into an indoor or a covered area, I always have my microfiber cloth yeah if not a very gigantic lens cloth one of these uh, again one one of these really soft uh, microfiber thing uh, use them to dry your camera completely yeah and once you get back to the hotel or back home I would what I want to do if it's not in the winter and uh, I will use a hair dryer just to blow it a little bit just to warm it up a little bit to it to a point that you can kind of vaporize all those moistures in gaps and stuff like that not overheated is not supposed to do that so don't do that but just gentle enough for the moisture to to go away to vanish and uh, in winter time obviously you can just leave it by the heater not too close otherwise you melt the plastic and uh, uh, or, or kind of melt the uh, the glue between the uh, the actual coverings to the body so that's not too good so just trying to be mindful about certain things but yeah i'll usually dry all my equipment so to, if you do all the procedures that i told you to you should be able to use your thing in the rain. Just not heavy rain, even if it's not weather seal. So it should be okay. The Pen F, I have used it in, like, really, a lot of rainy days. I did use it. So that's not really a problem whatsoever. Um, Right, Ryan. Hello there, Ryan. I picked uh, the EM1 Mark II over the EM5 Mark III. Wait for the EM1 Mark II is not a problem, but battery life on. Yeah, okay. Totally, totally get you. Yeah, that's one thing that I haven't quite mentioned, right? The EM1 Mark II has a big battery, like the EM1X and the EM1 Mark III. It has much, much bigger batteries. And I do think these batteries are so cool. Right, these are the EM1 Mark II on, and Mark III and X battery, right? This is the BLH1 battery. They are big. They are juicy. They are rated as a... Uh, oh, I can't remember the actual amperage now. I can't remember. Is it 1800? 17 actually 17 1720 milliamp so this is how big this battery is and then you have these little guys here this is the <laughs> the bls50 yeah and uh yeah this is a you just look at the size of these two batteries here and the uh, instant you can see that is is quite a bit smaller quite a bit flatter and narrow in and uh just look at this and this comes in at only 1200 milliamp so from a 1700 milliamp to 1200 milliamp, yes, I can totally get what you mean. Uh, that these guys, if you use the same features like filming or doing photographs, you're not going to get much out of this guy. And you, you will have to bring a couple of spare battery if you're going for day shooting. Uh, even though this have a USB-C charging. Is it USB-C or USB-2? Oh, it's USB-2. Oh, no, it's not. It's mini USB. Uh, so, yeah, it has a USB charging and uh, you can top it up uh, uh, in transit. But I always think that this uh, is definitely much cooler to have, or a much more convenient. You have a uh, 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 a couple of more spa spare batteries, so you can just swap it straight away instead of having to top it up. Uh, you can still do, of course, and uh, but I always carry spare camera, uh, camera spare battery for my EM5. Whenever I go, I probably have about four batteries with me uh, for the EM5. That's how much I will be using for the EM1. Like you said, I probably only need one more spare, and that's it. They are double the size of the battery, almost. So uh, they are cool batteries. So that's why I can completely relate to that. I think it's really good. Christian, I'm still waiting for my EM1X. <laughs> EM1X is cool. I love the EM1X and uh, it's, it's a bees. I'm, I'm, I've been using to film a lot of stuff lately because I'm, uh, I think I told you guys about that I'm uh, testing the firmware 2.0 on the EM1X with my Atomos uh, Ninja 5. So I'm doing a lot of raw shooting at the moment uh, in video terms. They are totally another level of stuff. And uh, I'm telling you, it's, it's very different compared to the normal video shooting because you're shooting raw. And uh, uh, not raw, raw, and but it's kind of almost like a TIFF files in, in, photo, in photography. You have a lot of information, 
So the file size is obviously a lot bigger, but it's not to the point that it's going to be like a huge raw file. Uh, so it's it's a cool it's a cool thing to do if you want to do a lot of a lot of color, color grading to create the look that you want, or even just trying to keep the highlights and shadow in. And the raw format is perfect for that. And uh, so far, I'm pretty impressed. I'm pretty impressed, but I still need to see uh, uh, Atomos to increase the level of compatibilities for the actual raw file coming up from the Olympus cameras because there is still a little bit of limitations there and uh, I can see so you have to stay tuned for my review on the firmware 2.0 on the EM1X uh, in, as a matter of fact it's probably very similar to the EM1 Mark III uh, and the EM5 because they, they're, they're all supporting oh, sorry not the EM5 the EM1 Mark III they all they both support the Apple ProRes RAW video shooting so they will be very very equal uh, so I've been testing it. I've been trying to find all the limitations there and I have found some already So I will tell you all about it when you see my video. So that will be all cool Tony Hatch there and I'm a bit late. <laughs> I'm here. There. Hello, Tony So retro I Bought the EM10 Mark III because one of your videos. Thank you. Do you like that video? Yeah, I, I, I remember that EM10 Mark III video so many people talk uh, talk to me about that video is that uh, not about the content, not about the EM10. Yeah, they were they were uh, they were saying that how could you stand in the middle of the road to do that review? <laughs> well, I'm telling you, I'm a little bit crazy when it comes to that sort of thing. And uh, uh, well, obviously, I I do look after my well-being. You know, I'm not going to do something extremely dangerous. And uh, when I say extremely, I still do something. And uh, but trying to be as safe as I can uh, to do something that. I think it's fun, you know. Like uh, I like to enjoy fun, you know. A little bit risk, I don't mind. And uh, 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 the, that particular video, I stand in in the mid. I did stand in the middle of the road, actually. And uh, but it's rel relatively safe there because cars are not moving very fast there. I stood by uh, near the traffic light, so they're not going to go too crazy there. So that's not too bad. And also, it's a lot of CCTVs there, and that means that there will be no speeder around that road, so that's okay. Uh, but yeah, I, I actually remember that video very well, and I love that video as well myself. Tony, you're here. Yes, Tony. How are you, Tony? Right. Tapper reviews. A few grams on such a small camera is not worth it, in my opinion. Still rather have a nice metal shell. <laughs> you are not giving up, mate. You're not giving up. You still want your metal camera. AC, how many Olympus do you have in your collection? Good question. Right. I do have fa a fair few here. I have the EM10s, two EM10s there. So I have two EM10s. I have two EM5s here, two EM1s, uh, Mark IIs. Uh, so one Mark II, one Mark III. The other Mark II, I told you, I'm going to give it to a friend. So it's not going to be here soon. The EM1X, Pen F. EPL 9 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 about 9 camera 9 9 Olympus here all of them are current cameras <laughs> yeah i'm i'm kind of i'm kind of crazy uh but having said that you know i do need to use a lot of cameras to do demos so uh, and uh, and also because i'm an Olympus ambassador as well so i do get access to some of them fairly quickly and and uh, some of them they do send send to me for review and uh, and also just to talk about cameras in general. So I, some of the cameras here are not mine. You know they it's still Olympus, so I have to return them as and when I finish them. So I just have to ship it back. But yeah, some of them I do own, like the M ones I own and the Pen F I own, the EPL I own, X I own that I'm using now, and uh, I do own a few cameras, like I said. <laughs> So, um, I expect two digit answers. Well, that was two digits already, I think, was it? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think I have 11, 11 Olympus cameras. Yes, it is two digits, isn't it? Yeah, 11. I have I have 11, I have 11 cameras, Olympus cameras. Not, that's excluding all the other cameras I have. And, uh, that's, that's crazy. <laughs> Right, uh, let's get another comment up here. Guzman, hello. I'm still learning from my OMD EM something, something Mark III. <laughs> Don't worry, we have a good community here. They're all very knowledgeable people here. And uh, if you have any question, you're very welcome to message either myself or join my group on Facebook, See the World, and then uh, you will see it there. Uh, uh, a lot of people there are very experienced. They have a lot of knowledge about operating cameras, and uh, most of them are Olympus guys or Michael Forther. So, if you have any questions, 
you have your you have uh, you have it covered so don't worry about it and Darko, hello there and should I get the EM10 Mark 4 I've already have the Mark 2 right okay what do you do first because uh, because uh, uh, if you shoot a lot of um, photographs and videos especially videos because the, uh, the new one actually is slightly better because of the autofocus but overall I think I actually personally think that I know the Mark III was a little bit underwhelming and uh, uh, when it when it was first released you know compared to the Mark II not only for the build but also for the features but the Mark IV definitely redeemed itself and the Mark IV is a worthy successor a worthy upgrade if you already got the Mark II and think you will be impressed with it. First of all, it's got a new sensor. It's got a 20 megapixel sensor. So it's got a big jump in terms of resolutions. Not that you really need it, but you do get a little bit more detail. And then second is that you got, yeah, the AF is way better than the Mark II. Way better than the Mark II. So if you use a lot of AF, especially for shooting people, <laughs> and then um, because it's got this same eye and face detection from the M1 Mark III, it's cool. Is really really cool and it's very useful for that, and uh, and IBIS is slightly improved, burst rate slightly improved, uh, overall speed is actually improved. Uh, yeah, you would you will see the difference between the Mark Four and the Mark Two. So yeah, if you really are looking and considering Mark Four, if you uh, uh, think that that's the right camera for you, uh, because I think you know you have other options there. You have the M Five, but obviously that's more expensive. But you are gaining quite a bit more. You got a hybrid AF. You got the weather sealing. And uh, 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 it got quite a bit more punch to it for everything. Um, but if the EM10 Mark IV is uh, something you want to keep in you know, uh, both the handling and also the weight si weight side of it, because the EM10 is a very lightweight camera. So if you like that, yes, I would think the Mark IV is a very, very worthy successor. And you won't be disappointed with it because I've tried it. And uh, it's a very cool. Let me just show you here. I have it right here. There we go. I found my 12 to 100. <laughs> there we go. So like the uh, the the Mark IV is an awesome awesome camera, and I do like to shoot with this guy. And uh, compared to the the Mark III, this is definitely yeah definitely worth it. I think um, uh, it's a very very cool camera. Now I run out of space to put my camera. I have to put it back now. Okay, right. So what's next here? And. Uh, Hello, Paul. Paul Salura. Uh, S uh, S uh, Salaru. Hello there. How are you? Tony, I've dropped my EM10 a uh, couple of times. Not even a scratch. Four foot drop off my shoulder. Nothing. Works great like new. <laughs> Don't try it at home, mate. <laughs> I mean, like, all the other apart from Tony. Well, I think in general, Olympus cameras are quite tough. And uh, I have dropped my EM1, uh, my EM5, and my EM1X. I've dropped all of them. And uh, not intentionally, not for a drop. Not for a drop test. Uh, it just accident that I, I, uh, 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 I had because uh, when I when I go out for work, sometimes, like I said, you know, accident happens and people just run into me and knock knock the camera off my hand if I'm not wearing a strap or anything like that. It it happens. Things happens and I drop all these cameras. They seem to survive. And uh, so far, apart from the EM One X that I'm having here, I've got a couple of scars there. And uh, but. It's only scar when, when, where by means of the only the paint that kind of rubbed off a little bit. But overall, I don't see a dent. It, it just how solid the M1X is. It just is it's it's too solid, too solid. And one and one <laughs> one oh git <laughs> photo lab four is excellent. Yes, it is. Yeah, like I said, if you haven't tried it, yeah, it's something that you should try. I'm not recommending it. Uh, uh, you have to try to see for yourself like I said so many times even though that I review gears uh, even though I'm an Olympus ambassador uh, uh, I am trying not to sell you stuff I always urge you to try it before you buy it and uh, so you don't have to listen to everything that I said but I'm only giving you a lot of my opinions from what I use what I do as a profession and uh, so it's it's all that it's all that is. So I don't obviously I can't speak for everybody, especially that I don't do let's say I don't do astral photography, I don't do uh, underwater photography. So something quite specific I wouldn't 
be able to comment too much because I don't do that. But for things that I do, which mostly uh, photographing people uh, and streets and landscape stuff, I do a little bit of that because that's how I started photography. So um, so for those areas, I will be able to comment a little bit. And uh, so, uh, 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 but ultimately, if you ever want to decide to buy a camera, buy a software, buy something like that, and uh, it's the best thing to do is hold it in your hand. You know, I always urge it, you know, because handling means a lot because if you are a photographer you want to hold something in your hand it needs to feel comfortable and uh, because it is it's, it's an extension for your arm and eyes right you need everything you everything has to have that connections there and uh, this is something that i have put a lot of emphasis on when whenever it comes to camera body and handling and uh, uh a photographer needs to feel the camera you know all the buttons and dial has to be at the right place you know and uh, you need to you need to access it quick you need to know how to access it quick uh, and also like the overall feel of it you know how you touch it how you handle the camera one-handed two-handed doesn't matter you just have to have that connection as a as a photographer without that connection it's going to be lacking a little bit but i'm quite pleased to say that not trying to sell olympus to any of you and uh, but i do think olympus general ergonomic and the design is phenomenal and you can actually see a lot of reviewers not just my words but you see a lot of reviewers praising the same thing about olympus cameras the grip the all the grips are cool you know full stop the grips are chunky it's, it's just have that good hand shape to it so it, it just mold around your hand very very well you just can work with the camera straight away without having to kind of adjust yourself to it so um, it's a known thing so like it's, a, it's an olympus thing so to speak so i think i think they have a good designers they know how to sculpt the cameras and to fit in a photographer's hand whether uh, whatever size you are obviously they got different things to shoot different sizes uh, but generally the handling's pretty good pretty cool um luca hello there um is good olympus so is the em10 mark III good yes well it is a good camera you know we have the list here remember we just did a poll here uh, currently Olympus at least in the UK we're still selling the Mark II the Mark III and the Mark IV right and all of them are good cameras you can see the, how popular they are the Mark II is still very popular even more popular than the Mark IV but having said that the Mark IV only been around for a few months so it's not actually that old yet and the Mark II has been around for quite a quite a while now but you can see it's still a capable thing and people still love it and that's why it's, it's still on the list uh, the, the, uh, and it's still yeah, you can see the numbers there. It's still quite popular compared to the Mark III and the Mark IV. Uh, so it is a good camera. So if you want to get it, yeah, it's now actually quite cheap now, at least in the UK. I'm not sure where you are. Uh, but in the UK, the the Mark III is on sale at the moment, I guess. And uh, so it, it's good. If you want to check out all the Olympus deal, you can just head over to olympus.co.uk there and go to the shop and you can find all the current offers. And I think they have the lens cash bag. They have some deals that they're throwing a, a free macro lens or free 45 mil 1.8 lenses uh they are really cool i think i always think that christmas time is the best time to get to get uh, uh a camera stuff because uh not, not only just olympus but in general because you do have a lot of deals there you have a lot of cashback deals you have a lot of free stuff freebies giveaway in the um the olympus now have the lenses depending on what package you uh, you go for uh if you're just getting lenses they have cashbacks yeah, it's, it's, it's a good time to get it. It's, that's, that's for sure. <laughs> um... <laughs> right. Retro is saying that Affinity can also replace Adobe. I, I, I know. I, I personally know Affinity. I actually have Affinity. And uh, I don't use it as much, to be quite frank. Uh, uh, my friend swears by it. You know, a couple of my friends use Affinity. And the good thing about Affinity is you can, you can run almost the entire full suite on iOS, on iPads. And, uh, and so you get basically the same functionality, same features, powerful features from Affinity, the full desktop version on an iPad. That's, that's awesome. And I know my friend swears by it because he, he, he's a professional photographer. So he does a lot of uh, product stuff. So he runs a lot of catalogs uh, for like uh, 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 retailers and stuff. So he's got a big business there. So he runs a lot of this stuff and used Affinity rather than Adobe. Uh, the, and he told me how good it is. I was testing it as well. Uh, I do like it. I do like it. But like I said, I'm not actually a Photoshop guy. So I don't use Photoshop by default anyway. 
I only use Photoshop every now and then just to do a couple of things. I don't use it fully. I'm more of a kind of like a raw guy in a way that I don't do manipulation too much. So I tend to use a lot of features that they already have in the Lightroom or now on DxO. DxO is actually pretty powerful in, in that sense and uh, for to, to do a lot of local adjustments, which is kind of how I usually uh, uh, vision or visualize uh, how I develop photos back in the film days. I do adjustments like that. I don't do manipulation because back in the old days, you know, there's so much adjustment or a manipulation can do with a physical uh, negative. You can do, of course, you know, airbrushings and stuff like that, but it's, it's not to the level that we're seeing in Photoshop these days. And this is something that I don't do too much. I'm probably just too old school to, to do like, you know, what people do now. Don't get me wrong though. Some people are just so cool, you know, doing about uh, all these really awesome editing stuff. Uh, just, just crazy, right? You know? And um, KA is okay. I'm late. Started 65 minutes ago. Has that been that long ago? I must do catching up with my comments. <laughs> I think we're running one and a half hour already. Um, Jason, no penf on the chart. My favorite walk around street camera, right? <laughs> right. Well, I did say in my community post that this is the vote for current cameras that you can still buy from Olympus, uh, the uh, Olympus catalog that are listing as current cameras. So unfortunately, Penef was discontinued in 2019. That's why it's not on the list. I think if we put it in here, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be in the top three, at least for me. Well, for me, it will be the top. It will be the top of the chart, no doubt about it, because I love the Penef. And uh, uh, even though the EM1X is my workhorse, but the Penef is always going to be that special camera, and that's why in my top uh, uh, Olympus collections, you know, I don't know if you seen my last video my Olympus collections, the Penef is in that group there. It's my special thing and that I love. Did you guys like my collection though, by the way? And uh, have you have you guys seen my my uh, Olympus collections? I have some crazy stuff there, right? But I still have more stuff, but I couldn't show all of them in, in, in here. But I have the the bag, I love the bag. I, I really genuinely love this bag. This is this is the pen bag, by the way. So like if you, uh, they made it, uh, for the pen cameras in in uh, in in Europe, so like you can only get it in Europe. So you can't get it in Asia or in America, unfortunately. So this bag is exclusive in the European market, and they did it with a lot of uh, yeah, pen Olympus like engraving somewhere, you know, like to make it as an Olympus kind of bag. Uh, but it's made by Blue Shoof. You know, you can see the badge here. It's it's a very very special very lovely leather bag and uh, inside is actually very good as well inside is all blue because <laughs> the whole bag the whole bag is leather and then uh, I'm trying to open it so I still got a lot of stuff here so actually oh 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 my pen F is here <laughs> right yep I found my pen F is in the bag so there you go so the pen F is right here with all the decoration kit that you see there from the video and uh, this is actually very cool so this is this is the um, the bag, I don't know if you can see it though. There you go. So inside is all also blue and uh, it's, it's nice, it's lovely. So I'm going gas crazy again. So what you, what is special as well, you can even have the people who made the bag sign and date it. And uh, like I said, this bag is completely handmade and that is why it's so bloody expensive. But being a crazy guy like myself who collects stuff, so to speak, and uh, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Sorry about the gas again. And then uh, I know I know I shouldn't be showing you this. Uh, it kind of kind of make me feel like a a, a weirdo who loves to uh, spend my money on something that is uh, may not be useful. Because I do have a lot of camera bags, and uh, bags is something that I I have I have a lot uh, in my collection. If I swing around the camera, um, the 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 camera, you will see that I have loads of billing in on my shelf there. Just from what I can see here now, I have at least, at least 10 Billingham's just, just lying in that corner there. Um, the, and I have other bags. Yeah. But I'm soon, I'm soon going to re review a lot of other bags. Because uh, uh, you guys are lucky. If you guys are into Manfrotto, Gissel bags, uh, I have 
uh, made a uh, arrangement so that you will start to see a lot of the bag reviews as well. So if you guys want to see a lot of uh, 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 bags, because which could because I don't see a lot of bag reviews on in in on YouTube, and that's quite frank. Every time if I want to search something, there aren't many um, uh, channels that actually do reviews for camera bags. So hopefully I'll make a difference here. So this channel is gonna see a lot of camera bag reviews, and uh, uh, I'm now collaborating with Manfrotto. If you guys love Manfrotto stuff, low pro stuff, no problem. I have low pro, Manfrotto, and Jisoo. These are three main manufacturers do a lot of carrying solutions. So uh, I'm gonna have a lot of uh, uh, back to starting to have a look at it. Whether it's gonna be backpack, shoulder bag, even roller cases, I'm gonna have them in my in my procession here. So I can uh, I will start showcasing some of them uh, to you guys. And uh, obviously, back you know if you if you go to Manfrotto's website, they have absolutely hundreds of bags so i wouldn't be able to do all of them because i would not be able to stock them in here and 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 trying to do every single one of them and uh, so i will pick out some of the things that i think is pretty cool and uh, and and show you guys accordingly um things that i think as a michael forther photographer as a, a a content creator as a professional what i see is useful so hopefully i'll pick the right one for you guys but if you have a very specific model that you want to see, please let me know, and uh, uh, I would I would be able to access it. You know, and but depending on whether they have it in stock, that's the only thing. But if you see something that you like from Manfrotto, uh, from Low Pro, and also from uh, uh, Jisoo, yeah, let me know, and uh, I will be able to uh, um, uh, access them. You know, and uh, subject to availability, if I have them, uh, if they have them, they uh, I will be able to get them to show you guys what they look like, and then uh, you can see. Uh, and have a feed, uh, have a look at it and see whether it's something that you would like to use it for your camera equipment. All good? All good. So this is something exciting for the 2021. So uh, uh, I'm quite excited that my I'm able to branch out a little bit more than just cameras and lenses. And uh, lenses, you already seen a lot, uh, other brands that I'm re already reviewing, like Lawa lenses, Pergear lenses, uh, 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 even uh, 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 Mitacon lenses. Uh, so I have access to a lot of stuff here, uh, video stuff. I, I have a very strong uh, uh, relationship with Jin, uh, gimbal company. So if you're doing filmmaking, I have a lot of gimbals as well. Uh, lighting, I have lighting equipment. <laughs> it's all coming. So like this channel is expanding. So I'm going to do a lot more than just about uh, uh, Olympus gear. So I'm trying to get you a, a good variety of stuff. But if, if you guys want to see anything that, um, that may interest you, uh, uh, accessories that will benefit for your photography or filmmaking, let me know that I, I'll see if I can get hold of them and I will be able to review them as well. So that's, that's something I'm quite happy to uh, announce uh, uh, to you guys. Uh, so all of you who are joined this live, uh, live feed uh, every Wednesday, yeah, you always hear something new that I, I'm saying. Yeah? <laughs> that, so you guys get the first hand information, uh, uh, you know, compared to a lot of people who just purely just go to my videos and stuff like that. Uh, the, uh, uh, and I love it. You know, like, that's why I, I treat you guys as friends, as close friends. That's why I'm sharing a lot of stuff with you guys. And, uh, and that that is new. You know, like uh, I haven't even been making announcements to a lot of places uh, saying that, you know, uh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I haven't even told anybody about that. Uh, and, uh, same same as a couple of live streams ago, I talked about other things. So it is exciting. It is exciting. So I'm I'm quite happy that uh, to continue working with uh, a lot of different companies and uh, to bring you more content, more variety of contents, so that you guys will be able to enjoy. Hopefully, okay. David Crooks, um, how are you guys? There, eh? plastic bag micro <laughs> seal your seal uh, in my weather seating for years. You know what? Talking about plastic bags, I don't know how many of you actually remember uh, the, in the old days. Actually, not in the old days. They still sell them. You know, if you go to camera stores or uh, or, or even online, you can see cam plastic bags for, camera, for cameras. For those are not weather seal cameras. And um, that's cool. They still use them. <laughs> you pay about £25 for a plastic bag, which is kind of crazy. But you can get plastic bags for your cameras. And uh, so literally, it just, it just like a poncho, uh, poncho, you know, you just stuff your camera and the lens in it. You've got a little opening at the front and for your lens, obviously, you know, to, to stick through. Uh, yeah, you can buy them. <laughs> and to be honest, if you worry about your camera too much, and uh, that could be a solution for you, as, uh, especially if you get something like the Pan F, you don't want to get it wet or dam uh, damage it or something like that. You can get a camera poncho 
<laughs> a, a rain cover for it. Uh, uh, they, they still sell it. They still sell it on Amazon, on camera stores, and uh, because it's actually very useful for 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 uh, uh, like um, uh, outdoor photography. Because I know a lot of beginners, they may not have the weather seal kits, you know, lenses or cameras, so they buy this kind of rain cover for the camera equipment so they can go and shoot in the rain. Especially if you do wildlife, for instance, you have to sit somewhere for a long time, you may have to sit in the rain. So that in that case, you need some sort of cover just, in, just to make sure that there's no drops of rain in the camera. And like I said, the IPX rating, remember I told you about that? Yeah, you need to make sure that equipment is not exposed to the elements for a long, long, long time. Because no matter how good a seal is, you can the water will eventually get in. So, uh, uh, so just be mindful of that. Um, Valdez, pen of mono possibilities are amazing. Absolutely, I love that mono dial. Seriously, that mono dial is so cool. Especially you turn it to the back, you can actually use the quick, quick menu there to adjust the color sensitivity. That's awesome. It's almost like an unlimited filters digital. Uh, black and white filters uh, 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 at the back of it and then you just keep turning and you can get adjusting to it to the look that you want instantly and then just get that crazy uh, 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 analog feel to it. So I think it's actually pretty cool, the Pen F. They should get the Pen F, man. They should get the Pen F back. Right, Manuel Vera. Hi Jimmy, could you show the difference in size between the EM1 X and the EM1 Mark III or two? And would you recommend the X for travel photography? Woo! Right? I would love to show you that because... Uh, but unfortunately, I can't because <laughs> I'm using the EM1X right here to, for, for streaming at the moment. So I can't really take it off and show, show you like this. Um, but if you have the grip of the EM1 and uh, it's almost like that. But the, EM1, the EM1X is still ever so slightly taller. Uh, so it is slightly bigger. In terms of travel photography, I would, I would, travel photography in one Mark III, right? Um, the the reason is size, and the uh, one is phenomenal. It's rugged. It's is is probably the toughest cameras I've ever handled in my hands. Uh, but the one three is definitely better for travel. It's I think it's the size difference there. Uh, I don't know about you. I mean, unless you're a vertical grip of guy, you know, where you like to shoot vertically a lot, and you like the just the whole balance feel to it. The M13 is uh, or M1 Mark II and Mark III, both basically the same size. Uh, is a much better travel companion because it's just 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 not as tall, not as deep compared to the M1X, and you can slip into your back a lot easier. So for traveling, for traveling. Yes, M1 Mark III. And it's weather seal, almost, I would say almost as tough as the M1X, even though they both rated as IPX1 uh, categories. And, uh, but the, the M1X still trump it, you know, I can tell you that, you know, and uh, the M1X has definitely has better sealing than the, the, than the M1 Mark III. But don't worry about it, M1 Mark III is, is, is it, <laughs> it will not be destroyed by normal rain. And uh, it's, it's cool. I, mean, I use the Eman Mark II in all kinds of horrible weather conditions. So uh, it, it survives. So it's not a problem at all. So for you, I would think Mark III. Eman Mark III or Mark II, depending on which, uh, which uh, your budget or what sort of functionalities you want. But both of them will be better for traveling just because of the size. Only the size. And Ryan, I would like to see Olympus remake the Olympus XA in the Michael Four Third version and keep it the same size as the XA film camera. Whoo, yeah. Who knows about the XA? I have two XAs actually, uh, somewhere. I have no idea where I put them. Um, the, they will be in boxes since because I moved into this studio uh, not long ago and uh, things are still kind of yeah, in a mess. <laughs> I'm still trying to organize stuff. You can see that I've got boxes everywhere. I haven't even hung anything on my wall. I haven't even decorated anything around here. And uh, I, I ran out of time. <laughs> but uh, I have XA and I can understand why you think XA is cool because it's a very, 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 very cool camera. And uh, it's a rangefinder film camera with a very, <laughs> very horrible, cheap, um, disposable film rewind 
plastic knob thing that you, you have to turn the film and advance the film. You know, you, you don't have the lever that you have in a normal camera. Um, but it's a cool camera. It's just so pocketable. It's so tiny. And it flips open. It protects the lens, which is actually cool. It's a 35mm. And um, the the X-A, the original version, is a, it's a proper range finder. It's not a zone focus camera like the X-A2 and, and after. The X-A, the original X-A, is a proper range finder camera. It's, a, it's coupled. So you can actually see the split image. And uh, it's actually very cool. It's a very cool camera. If you haven't seen one, if you want one, go and get one. It's actually very, very good. It's pretty reliable as well, the uh, the, the X-A camera. And uh, I have two of them. And only one... Uh, no, I have three. One of them broke. And uh, I think it's, I was just unlucky. But the other two that I got is, is flawless. And I don't see any problem with the X-A. And, uh, and uh, the shutter release is... Very, very sensitive. It's fully electronic, so if, if you uh, don't have battery, it would not function. The shutter wouldn't wouldn't do anything, and uh, so you just have to be mindful of that. But the electronic shutter, the uh, so the shutter button, you, you literally just touch it, it just snaps the shot. So you just be very careful with that. But other than that, yeah, it is a really cool is a really cool camera. I love the XA, and. Um, but in terms of size, though, I don't think they can fit everything into that size, to be quite frank. And uh, uh, because the X8 is tiny, it's very, very tiny. It's a very simple camera in films. And uh, all the, look, it's, it's got that horrible springy film advance thing. It doesn't have any levers and things like that. So the construction of it is so cheap. Uh, but it's a very effective uh, uh, camera. And it's now it's, an, it's a cult icon, right? You know, the, uh, I think for people who know about X8 will agree that it's, a, it's an icon now, that camera. And it does command quite a bit of premium as well on the use market. Right. Um, just bought an Olympus 14 to 150 with the EM10 Mark III used for 400 euros. That is not bad. Not bad. Mark III is much better than my old Mark II, <laughs> especially the grip. <laughs> I think people have different opinions about the Mark II and the Mark III. And, uh, but uh, like, uh, like I said, all of them are great cameras, depending on whether you do use some of the newer features or the older features, whether you appreciate one thing over another, like some people were debating about metal and plastic. So it's it's, it's, it's a whole spectrum of users out there, and uh, I can't really speak for everyone. I'm only speaking on that uh, uh, if I think it performs to the levels that I want, is a great camera. And uh, so it, in most cases, in most cases, the Olympus deliver, and I think that they are all generally quite cool cameras. So Dieter, hey, uh, I didn't want to say anything against such a discussion. I just find the comparison funny when I consider the camera is ultimately just a tool. Uh, <laughs> even if it's a very nice one. <laughs> yeah, I, I did say that, didn't I? The, the, uh, in my slow cooker, slow cooker video, uh, the, I, it's word by word. I meant everything there um, the, uh, for me. Yeah, I, I can shoot with any cameras. Any of the models I have here, I can shoot with other brands if I really want to. I can shot with smaller brands. I can shoot with my smartphone even. A photographer is a photographer. I mean, it's how you interpret the scene, how you use that focal length, uh, how much you know about the focal length, and then how you can exploit whatever the limit is in the camera. And uh, uh, and if you can, you know, basically live with that camera, what is what is capable of, you've got a camera. You know, like it doesn't really matter what, what it is, what brand it is, what model it is. Uh, uh, a camera is camera. Is depending on your preference ultimately, you know, whether you are going to uh, treasure one thing over the other, whether you prioritize, uh, 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 you know, lighter weight over heavier weight, uh, whether you're going to favor, you know, higher ISO performance because you, you just live as a paparazzi, you know, you need the ISO performance, then, you know, it's, it's a lot of things going on there. I wouldn't say that one thing is over another. Like I said in my video, I said that. Uh, uh, is Michael Force the perfect camera? Is it? Is it? Is it the best system in the world? I said no. I actually, frankly, said no. You know, I'm, I'm just being honest here. You know, like if we say the Michael Force is everything, no, it's not. It has compromises, but the compromises is something that you you you're trading. You know, you're trading something else. You're getting a lighter system. You're getting a a, a better IBIS. You know, you're getting a lot more from others. Uh, so there's a whole thing that is going on there. And all I said was Michael Force deserves his place in the micro in the indie photographic world. Uh, it's true. I think that every format has its own advantage and its disadvantage. And it really down to the person who operating it, down to the type of photographer you are ultimately to decide which system is best for you. 
uh, that's 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 all I wanted to say uh, ultimately. And uh, uh, so when I said right at the end, you know, the video, like you know, uh, the, I I have to apologize for my language there. You know, I say like stop bitching about you know whatever brand you own is the only solution, um, because it's true. And uh, because I time and time again I keep hearing photographers uh, really like stepping on other photographers if they're using other systems and other brands they always think that whatever they use whatever brand they own is kind of like the only thing in the world that's worth considering and i, I think it's, it's a very one-sided thing it's very blindfolded thing that you, you talk about you, you almost talk like you're not really a photographer you're only talking about you are a a a very proud brand owner rather than a photographer to me i want to see your picture you know, if the picture tells everything, you know, if you're, if you are good at what you're doing, I don't think cameras actually matters that much. You know, it's such a tool for you. It's a tool to capture whatever you wanted to. Um, so in that case, I can see that I don't see a problem with Michael Forther. Not at all. You know, like it performs the way I want it to for what, whatever I do. And, uh, and hence I switch over from Canon to, to, to Michael Forther because I see what the Michael Forther can do for me. And uh, 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 at the same time, I can also see Canon is very good at something else, you know. So that's why we have different brands. You know, uh, we we need the varieties out there to push the boundary. We need the varieties out there to give people choices. I don't want what I don't want is one brand and one brand only that controls everything. Eventually, and that's what I don't want to see. Um. So great here, great to hear about the back reviews, but billing and backs are the best. <laughs> Look no further. <laughs> well, you, you you know that I am a Billingham guy, you know, and uh, that's why I have so many Billingham bags, and these are my personal collections, and uh, I I love them. You saw my Olympus uh, Olympus Michael, uh, so Olympus Billingham, and that's a special one. Like I said, uh, it's so special that you can't buy them, and uh, unless you buy the EM1 Mark II. Uh, uh, last year in 2019, they did only a very small production run for that particular bag. I know it's not very special. There's no special, sorry, no more special than the normal standard uh, Hadley Pro. But if you're a collector, if you are very a big fanboy for Olympus, you know, you will treasure that little tag, just that little tag on the camera back there. You just say Olympus and then Billingham next to each other. They just it just makes it all worth it. It's just a special bag because you can't get it. You know, you simply can't get it. If you really see one on the used market, you know, if you do see on the mar a used market, yeah, yeah, grab it. You know, if you have a chance, grab it because the uh, the it, it's so rare. You know, I don't see many people owning it, and uh, so it's it's actually a pretty cool thing. <laughs> um, thanks for the coffee as always. Please keep me informed the, about the new JIP Olympus. I shall do. If I know anything, of course, I will let you know. And uh, like I said, they are still in transition. Um, even though they have the new company set up, they have everything done, uh, the, they signed the agreements and so forth. Uh, but there are still a lot of things that they need to uh, finalize uh, in the new year. I'm pretty sure in 2021, we'll definitely see a lot more information there. So hopefully by then, I will be able to share more insight uh, with you so to let you know what's going on. Uh, but all I know is new product is still coming. So uh, so I'm excited about all those new products. I am still waiting for my chance to touch to touch the 150 to 400 Pro lens. You know that's mm, is my dream lens. That will be that will be my Christmas present. But of course I can't afford the bloody lens. It's so expensive and uh, 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 and not not just expensive. I can't get hold of them. You know, and uh, it's six and a half grand. So bloody expensive, man. But I told you, it's worth every single penny. If you're a collector like myself, you can see all this collection that I have. You know how much I'm, yeah, I'm actually drooping at the moment. You know, just drooling all over my paper, my desk, just wanting to touch and see and own that lens there. <laughs> Paul, I have the EM5 Mark II, EM1 Mark II, fantastic cameras. I can't wait to get the EM5 III. Plastic or no, still the smallest and lightest weather seal camera. Correct. It is. It is. It is a good camera. I can, can tell you that. Lee, great to see you. Uh, so I'll beat man. Exciting time ahead for the new year. Looking forward to upcoming content. Thank you, Lee. Thank you for com like continuous support. I really treasure all of you guys here. Like I said, without any of you being here, I would have quit YouTube. 
you know, this year. And, uh, 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 you know, a few videos back and I was saying uh, how how horrible the year has been for me and uh, how deflated I was, how how horrible I feel generally, you know, and, 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 and this year, you know, after, you know, the pandemic, you know, the general general negativity that's surrounding me, you know, then my dad passed away uh, and my business is literally vanished. Um, it, it's hard, you know, it's a very tough year for me. And But it's all because of all of you, uh, uh, you know, like, I, I, I don't know how many times I have to say thank you, but I will continue to say thank you because it really was, without you guys, I, I would have disappeared from YouTube. And uh, because I, I just found no motivation whatsoever to do anything. And, uh, but... You were hit, you were there, keeping me active, <laughs> and uh, this live stream is fantastic. You know, like uh, I have you guys on my back all the time. You know, like uh, 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 talk to me. You know, encouraging me, saying that I've been I've been great doing this and that. You know, is is every word means something to me. You know, like uh, even just a, a this, even just a thumb means something to me. And, uh, and uh, I know some of you guys are. are you know, may not follow me right from the beginning of the channel. Some may have left the channel and come back and uh, uh, through this journey. Uh, so I've been around for about three, three, three and a half years now on YouTube. And uh, but it's all because of you guys, you know. And uh, I mean, I, I did it as a kind of like a hobby thing, you know. And uh, because I, you know, I, I earn my income from my from my jobs and stuff like that. And uh, YouTube is something that I would like to just build a community. And I just wanted to share my experience. or genuinely just trying to share some knowledge. And uh, just be happy about doing things and hopefully bring some entertainment. As you can see that all my videos tend to have some sort of uh, uh, models that I used to joke with. I talk about things and uh, I'm trying not to be too serious about things uh, because we, we are serious enough. We are in a serious world. You know, you see a lot of reviews out there. Uh, very serious. <laughs> you know, they talk about a lot of spec stuff. You know, they, they show sample images again and again. Talk about the numbers. I'm trying to get rid of them. I'm trying to distance myself from numbers. We, we remember this slow cooker videos I told you about. And uh, the reason I did that video is just to show you that at the end of the day is you, is your eyes, your brain, is, is your creativity. You know, like when I do reviews and uh, I try to actually show you how I work more than actually talking about how many grams on the, in the lens, how many elements, even though I do that nowadays, but then I, I'm just trying not to be too serious about certain things and uh, of course this pandemic year is slightly different I can't I haven't seen my models for a whole year now uh, so this year is slightly different but as soon as things back to normal I will be able to go out and shoot again and I'll be able to go out and talk to them again and uh, hopefully I will be kind of back to my kind of normal entertainment self but obviously things have changed a lot and I will incorporate the element back and uh, will mix it mix up a little bit so my video will definitely evolve when things back to normal and uh, we shall see you know I'm looking forward to that day to come because I haven't I haven't uh, done any of those interactive uh, uh, photo shoot for a long time now and I can't wait to see that um Basil hello there uh, I wish Olympus would release a set of metal seal primes. Like yeah, we just talked about that, right? Uh, I don't think you're. I don't think you're silly. You know, obviously you're entitled to your opinion, and I think that is it would be cool for Olympus to release something like that. And uh, uh, yeah, you're quite right. The 40, twenty-five and the forty-five are plastics, apart from the seventeen, which is the, which is metal. Um, yeah, well, I I think if they do that though. Just be mindful. It could be a little bit more costly than what they are now, because the twenty-five and tw and forty-eight, well, uh, sorry, forty-five one point eight are relatively affordable lenses, and they're high quality affordable lenses. If they're ever going to release a sealed version, and also metal, you could expect at least double the price. And at that time, would you buy it? Would you buy a forty-five one point eight? Let's say, hypothetically saying. A 45 1.8 metal weather seal lens for 500 pound. Would you buy it? You have to think about the, the 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 cost there. You know they can't release the same lens weather seal and give you metals and everything, but selling at the same price. <laughs> it mathematically doesn't have, doesn't work like that. So you can think about, you know, would you buy the the prime lenses weather seal but metal for double the price you can look at the cost of the 17 and 12 the 12 is 500 500 pound at least in the, in the uk without the hood and then uh, then you have the the 17 1.8 is also 350 380 pounds so 
they are way more than the 25 and the 45 1.8 lenses and uh, and they all of these are non weather seal they are they're not weather seal lenses so imagine that so you kind of have to do some maths there and to think if that lens does come would you buy it for 500 even 600 pound you know and uh, uh, so that would be my guess if they're ever going to release something like that it won't be as cheap as you may think that we're having today uh, i still think the 25 to 45 1.8 lenses are really really great value for money and uh, because they are just so capable especially 45 like i said i take the 45 1.8 out more than I take the 45 1.2 Pro <laughs> because it's just so damn good that thing you know it's so small and light and uh, I use the 17 and 25 1.2 Pro lenses almost a lot you know uh, for my for my portrait shoots but every now and then if I need to use the 45 I actually use the 45 1.8 more than the 45 1.2 unless I know that I'm going to shoot in a very horrible con uh, uh, weather conditions and I'll take the 45 1.2 but other than that yeah, the 1.8 is kind of kind of almost my go-to lens for the 45 focal length. Um, right, uh, let's see there. Carlos, hello there. Do you recommend to use the OM lenses on the OMD body? And uh, well, why not? Why not? I, mean, I I adapt to a lot. I adapt a lot of manual lenses and older lenses to the uh, OMD bodies, but. Don't forget that you're adapting a full frame lens because back in the days, all the 35 millimeter lens, uh, 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 lenses are basically the full frame. I, mean, I still don't know why people call it full frame. This doesn't make sense. Call it the format. They call it 135 format, whatever. Digital 135. Anyway, so you have when you adapt these lenses there and uh, you are doubling focal length, essentially. So like whatever you have the OM, uh, your, on your OM collection, if you have a 50, uh, let's say 51.8, you bang it onto the OMD board, it's going to be instantly becoming a 100mm lens. Can you live with that conversion there? Because uh, the widest, uh, uh, well, not the widest, they have wider lenses, but the, the even the 28mm uh, uh, OM lens, you know, is quite wide in, a, in in back in the film days. But if you put it onto the OMD bodies, it's doubling it. So you've got 56, you know, it's, it's, so you're not getting a lot of it. However, the look you're getting from these old lenses are cool you know like it's really awesome i love the vintage look i love the halo i love the lower contrast scenes uh, because you can do a lot you can massage the digital files uh, quite well to create that really old vintage vibe uh, especially filming filming using old lenses are cool man i'm telling you it's really awesome i love using older lenses to film because uh uh, uh you, you just can't replicate it in 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 videos it's just really really awesome to have the the older kind of vintage look to it but even photography is really simple it's the same thing as well i think it's actually very very good i love i love using older lenses um manu thanks no problem mate thank you thank you for answering uh thank you for asking asking me <laughs> tapper hello there uh there you saying that again jimmy you're so right about the camera brands i love my olympus but i like all good cameras some day i'll be adding a full frame camera maybe nikon or canon uh fuji is also very good i i used to have loads of camera to be honest i used to have loads of cameras and uh um and you know that's before i became a professional you know just like a lot of you if, if you're not really using your camera to make money and uh, of course if you have disposable income you can get whatever you want whatever pleases you you know and uh, uh, you should be happy you know when you do something right and uh, just like at the beginning of, of this live stream today you know i showed you the olympus video again and uh, right at the end you know the olymp the the, uh, the one of the directors from, from olympus in japan said that olympus trying to deliver happiness and something that that not much these days which i think is a very good and very emotional statement there and uh, uh because ultimately is as a photographer regardless your uh, of your level regardless of how good you are if this what pleases you if if this hobby that what makes you happy that's that's all it matters you know like and i don't really I know a lot of people trying to showcase a lot of stuff online, do things and trying to gain popularity, trying to gain a lot of thumbs and things like that. I, you, unless you are at the competition level, unless you are making money from photography, you know, and uh, if you are just using the camera, using photography as a hobby, I think that as long as you're happy, you're enjoying 
the process of making photographs, going out, taking photograph, holding the camera in your hands and doing things with it. That, that's all that matters. That's all. That's all you need, you know. And uh, I, I was one of those persons who just enjoy the process and you know, and uh, I love photography. That's why I'm still doing it. And now I'm doing it for 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 money, you know, for as a profession. It's quite hard when you're being becoming professional because you are dictated by what the client wants most of the time, and uh, so it's it's a very different ball game altogether. But I still love it. I still enjoy the process of creating it. I still love the brainstorming side of it. But I'm quite fortunate, and in in a way that because now I'm I'm more established, so I can command a lot of creativity back from my client because now I educate them. I actually say that I only do this. I don't do that. So like I'm in a position to do it. So uh, that's the fortunate side of my business. Um, but for a lot of people who are starting out, um, they may not have that luxury because they're trying to make their name for themselves. And uh, uh, it's ever so hard when you're trying to please a client, trying to grab a business, right? And uh, so it's it's very different when you're established. You can command a little bit in the left, right, and center a little bit more than the uh, guys who are just starting out. But having said that, I've been through there. You know, when I first starting as a professional, and uh, I I I have to do everything. You know, like uh, whatever comes, you know, it's business, right? It's money, so I just grab it. So it, it's it's something I think you got to enjoy photography. You got to love what you do uh, uh, to be able to last that long. You know that that's that's what like, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> So, and, uh, right, okay. Could you imagine to do a, I edit your photos video, I would enjoy it. Who, who wants to see this? I, I've been wanting to do this for a long time, but I've been asking some people to send me some of your photos <laughs> so I can edit them. And, uh, so I mean, I, I actually genuinely want to do this. If you, if you are happy, Please do send me some photos. You know my contacts. You know you see my my social there. You can go to my website. You see my email there. Send me some photos of yours, uh, preferably raw, and uh, so I can edit properly. And uh, so I, I I'm happy to do it. If I have your photos, I can do a series uh, 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 of videos that just basically edit your photo. I can even do live if you want to. Uh, so if you want to see how my workflow is, how I, how I think about certain things, how I edit certain things. Um, that yeah, it's, it will be cool. I think it's a very fun thing to do. Uh, 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 also, I may, I may, I'm just saying, I said, I'm just only saying, I may inspire you, I may uh, change the way you see how to edit stuff. Uh, but you may know more things than I do, you know. Like I'm, I'm, I'm learning every day. I don't say that I'm a, I'm a, an encyclopedia in photography, I'm not, you know, I may be able to take photographs, uh, are pretty good ones, but <laughs> but I wouldn't say that I, I would know everything. In the photographic world there's so much to learn and then there's so much to 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 see to experience still and uh, uh photography is a great great place you know because so many different genre are there there is so many different types of photography uh if i have a chance i i would just go and see and experience everything you know i know a food photographer professional award-winning photographer who do, who only do for food photography he's a phenomenal guy uh his name is sean Cazell, and then uh, I, I actually did a video of, uh, in this channel with him you have to go back to the pro tip series you can see that and uh, that is a very very cool video uh but he's a very talented food photographer so i would love to try something like that it's really good it's not as easy as you might think actually uh, i know you see a lot of instagram are doing food photography but it's nothing to his level his level is just whoo, it's definitely something cool, amazing. When I went to see him, saw how he worked, and uh, uh, they had food stylists. They have food stylists there with him, two of them, just trying to mix, make sure everything looks good. It's some phenomenal just to see that work. And uh, yeah, it's really awesome. If you guys want to see how how I edit your photos, and uh, please let me know uh, in the comments and send me some stuff over, so I'll be able to do something like that. That would be really really awesome. And Paul. Fuji can make a 35 f2 metal weather seal and aperture ring for $400. Uh, Olympus should make all their lenses with weather seal and give them an edge. <laughs> right. Um, I've got nothing to say about pricing because they have, uh, depending on what sort of thing they do with those lenses, uh, the, uh, 
I, all I can say that is that Olympus lenses do use uh, pretty good optics and uh, that's another thing that you may not actually see uh, uh, and I have first hand experience on witnessing uh, how lenses were made and what sort of elements they choose to use and I can tell you they are not just I want to show you something with glass or oh, let's open this one they're not just a simple glass at the front, at the back, or something in the middle. They're not as simple as you may think. Each element inside has a very specific function, and each one of them, depending on the characteristics and overall performance, they have different costs. And this is something that you don't see, and you cannot kind of imagine, not just about the body shell, just the lens barrel, not just about the weather ceiling, but the lens element that they use inside plays a big part of the cost overall for the lens so people may not appreciate why would a pro lens cost so much more it's a lot to do with the actual lens elements that olympus employ within the lens itself and uh, you all know that olympus uh, uh, is very good with the uh, uh, endoscopes and medical lenses and stuff like that and those are like you know very very uh, high-end precision engineering and optical designs and uh, they're known for that and they are using the same philosophies and same designs for a lot of their lenses and that's why they are bloody good and that's why they're also quite expensive is because they know what to use for what design to create the optimal results for something and uh, not I'm not suggesting Fuji is uh, is bad in any way Fuji don't forget Fuji wasn't uh, didn't start out as a proper lens company. They make a lot of film. They have some cameras in the past. They have a lot of Fujinon lenses that are really famous and known. And uh, uh, but I, I wouldn't say that they are a uh, a full on like hundred percent film uh, 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 camera companies. Not not like the way that Olympus is, nor Canon or Nikon for that matter. Uh, but they are good. I'm not saying they're bad. And uh, and for four hundred dollars for their thirty five f two fully weather sealed metal lens, that is a good value for money. But I don't, because I don't use that lens at all, so I wouldn't be able to comment too much about that particular lens or see the performance of it. And uh, 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 the lens may not have the same quality of optics uh, uh, elements inside the body. That's all I can say. But I'm, I'm holding my hands up. I, I, I wouldn't try to defend Olympus in any way. But I'm just saying that there will be differences there. And uh, the reason that Olympus charges you that much for their lenses compared to any other brands there is a reason behind it. Obviously, there's a markup, of course, and there's a brand values there, but there is a reason for it. Right, okay, and... Uh, Olympus would, or wouldn't be complete if you quit. <laughs> hmm. Thank you, Handel. That, uh, I, w I wouldn't go as far as that, and uh, Olympus, Olympus can survive you know, without me, I'm I'm pretty sure. Uh, but I I I just I I love the brand. I love using the cameras. I think that uh, uh, that's that's all I can say. Not not because I'm an ambassador. You know, like uh, I, I I tell you, you know, like I've been frank. I became an ambassador last year. So like, uh, but I've been I've been like this before that, and I've been like this for quite a while. You know, since I switched over, and uh, it's because I love the product first. I love the products. Uh, uh, and I just genuinely enjoy the shooting experience with Olympus gear. Uh, that, that's all I can say. You know, like uh, uh, it's not something I would say I would want to sell, hard sell anything to 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 all of you there. I'm not trying to say Olympus is the best thing in the world. You know, I'm just trying to be honest. Like a, like the video that I just told you about. I never said the Michael Porter can replace everything you have. Nope, nope. But it's a preference that a photographer try, uh, choose to have. So like myself, I choose to use Michael Forther and I think it's suitable for me. It's my preference. So that there you go. But thank you. Thank you for your words. I think it's a, it's a very good thing to, for you to say like that. <laughs> um, Matt, Jimmy, about the plastic versus metal lenses of being priced around £500. If they are ever made, is not acceptable. <laughs> Well, I shall see. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just saying. And uh, uh, but there is another thing. Basil is just saying, I'll pay five hundred per prime gladly if metal sealed and aperture rings. <laughs> so that 
like I said, you can't please everybody. There are people who may think that is worthwhile, and people who may think no is not worthwhile, and uh, it's really depending on what sort of person you are. And uh, 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 ultimately, I would say ultimately depending on how good the lens is. Yeah, okay, yeah. Let's 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 just scrap all that we just talked about. If these lenses ever come out, you know, I think if it's performing to the level that I see, that I want, and I think. I would pay for whatever price it is. You know, a lens is different to a camera body. A lens to me lasts a long, long, a lot longer than a camera. So for me, I would invest in any lenses. So if it's a good lens, if it's a great lens, I'll pay. I'll pay because a lens is my eyes to out to the outside world. I want to see the rendering. I want to see how it it produces the image that I want to see. And uh, if if it's a really cool lens, god damn it, I will get it. I mean, uh, the 100 to 400 Pro is a different thing. I mean, I just want that lens because it, it because it is what it is. <laughs> but normally, for any lenses that I get, you know, like the Pro lenses, the 1712, the 2412, yeah, they are expensive, but I buy it because they're working lens. They are my workhorse lens. They are just lenses that I really loved. Uh, 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 the rendering of the the images that it produced is something that I think, you know, is worth my investment. So I guess to me is. Um, I know, I know what is uh, a lot of you guys thinking. You know, if it's, if the price level is is different, if it's more than others, they may not be able to compete in a way. I can understand the marketing. I can understand the the the, the business point of view. The the actual uh, 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 pricing issues. So I, I guess, I guess, um, the, uh, for a lot of people, if it's becoming that sort of level, may not be tempted by it. However, there will be people that will think that uh, whatever they've done, you know, if they add the weather ceiling, the weather, they added the uh, the the metal belt and aperture ring, if you guys fancy that, uh, the, if it's still a great lens, they will pay whatever money that is, obviously not the 1.2 Pro, but if it's 500 pound, you know, there could be something that could be decided of, then cool, so be it. <laughs> So Victor, which model are on the first position of the next photography 101 series? Uh, the, give a hint so how to find a beautiful model like you get. <laughs> well, I, I just ask around usually. I mean, I work with models a lot. And, uh, so I do have some contacts. Uh, just usually just raise my hand. Who wants to come to my show and then just be my model so I can photograph them? And uh, usually I have a few regular. We've seen them now. I've got Zoha and I have uh, well Charlie is in US now. He she she emigrated to 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 US to, in California now. So it's, uh, she's now a Californian girl. So like I don't have Charlie anymore, but I have Zoha. I have Sali. Sali still likes to be in the show. And uh, I I have some other models you really want to see them. And uh, but I just have to ask around. But who knows? After the pandemic year, I don't even know any of them still want to do anything like that. So we just have to see. We just have to see. Um, John, edit live stream is a good plan. And Rob Track does this, but you may have a different angle on images. I I know Rob does a lot of this live edit stuff, and uh, so is um uh Peter. I think Peter doesn't edit, but he does critiques. And uh, so, yeah, they all do different things there. So, I, I uh, like I said, if you guys want to see something different and uh, see how I see images or how, how you want to see uh, me improving an image, and uh, please do uh, send some stuff over. I think that will be really cool. I think it will be quite, quite a, a, a fun thing to do, to be honest. Paul, I left uh, with Optrack and put the final results side by side. Yeah. That would be good. So send one, send one photo of you guys, the edited photo of yours, and send me your raw file. Let me edit your photo and put it side by side and see, and uh, how how it compares. And uh, yeah, that that will be, that will be pretty cool. I think that will be really fun. If you guys like that, please do send me some stuff, and I will be able to start doing it. Uh, that would be really awesome, because I like I like to see the different perspectives. There's no, genuinely, there's no. Uh, uh, right or wrong there but I can tell you a little bit more maybe from a professional point of view from people who been in judging panels for 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 galleries for for competitions because uh, uh, I've, I've been judges myself so I can tell you what things are people are looking for sometimes and uh, so I can help you in, in that sense and I can also tell you uh, from a lot of things that uh, 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 that could potentially improve your photography through editing 
and uh, uh, even though uh, sometimes, uh, uh, like myself, you know, I, I don't take perfect photos all the time. And uh, so I, how I use my knowledge and my skill to kind of juggle around, trying to massage the photo to the way, to the way I want to present it. And uh, so that may help, uh, that, that might be quite helpful for a lot of you. And uh, so, yeah, please let me know. Red 35, uh, sorry, Jimmy, are you the youngest Olympus ambassador visionary or is it Robin wrong is the one? I actually don't know how old is Robin, to be quite honest. I think I might be older than him. <laughs> no, there there are younger ambassadors uh, actually in, in the Olympus uh, to be in, in, in the UK. I know there's a couple of ambassadors actually younger than me. So uh, uh, they, they are cool. They are really fantastic ambassadors. Uh, they, uh, they... They, uh, one of them is called Gerard. They, he does a lot of macro stuff. If you Google him, and then I'll go to Ambassador's uh, site in the UK, you see him, and uh, he's he's cool. He's a very funny guy. He he loves to talk a lot. Maybe one day I'll I'll invite him to do a live uh, interview with him so I can show you his stuff. Uh, he's he's a really cool dude. Um, thank you, Paul, for for your tip. <laughs> thank you very much, Scott. Uh, I certainly visited the photo editing series. Oh, cool. Right. Okay. That's awesome. So quite a few of you guys are up for it. So remember, send me some stuff so I can start looking at it. And uh, so I can prepare because I need time to prepare for it. Right. And uh, so if you guys start sending me stuff, I'll, once I accumulated a few photos, I will I will be able to plan a, a, a live edit so I can do it with you. Uh, together so so we can talk about it so hopefully that will be quite interesting if you guys don't want to see live i can perhaps edit a video out and then do something as well so that's it's all, uh, all entirely up to you so thank you paul for this super chat thank you very much <laughs> thank you and um, retro um i still have some of my granddad's lenses from the late 40s and 50s in my attic oh be careful about the attic Take them down, really. You know, like you may get molds in them. And uh, yeah, just be careful about putting lenses in the attics. If you don't look after them, they will become moldy. And once you become moldy, it's damaging to the lens element. So you just be very, very careful about that. And uh, yeah, bring them down, check them all. Uh, you can, to a certain extent, clean up the molds and, uh, and fungus. So that you may have to service the lens. If you're still in good condition, yeah, that's... To save them, you know, put them in a, a, a in a dry environment, not too extreme temperatures, and they're trying to maintain these older lenses because they are very fragile. I can tell you that. Um, awesome! I caught up with all the comments. Way cool, Yusuf. Hello there. You don't have um, I don't have any technical comments, but I just drop it to say, keep up the good work, Merry Christmas, and Happy New Year. Thank you, Yusuf. Thank you very much for dropping by. Really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, Merry Christmas for everybody. So I think it is also the time to wrap up. I think it's been talking for quite a long time once again. <laughs> and um, what's the best way to send photos to me? Okay, guys, you see that the, uh, the links up there. Actually, I do have my email here. Let me just uh, bring up my email here just to see there. By the way, guys, I have the See the World competition is expiring in two weeks. You have two weeks to submit your photos to win prizes. And uh, all information you can see that is up in the uh, seetheworld.gb.net website. And uh, uh, you still have a chance to win all these awesome prizes here. Lenses, bags and tripods. Awesome gifts to be won in the new year. So the deadline is end of this month. So you can still have a lot of chances to win it. Remember to submit something if you haven't already. I have already got quite a few submissions, so good luck to all of you. So for those who want to uh, submit photos for the edit series, uh, you can send it to, let me see my my email. Where's my email? There we go. That's my email. So if you want to send it to my my email, it's photos at jimmychain.photography. Right, I'm going to leave it on the screen so you can see it. So you can submit the uh, uh, all the photos uh, uh, for edit series then uh, please please send it to this where this particular uh web uh, not website email yes send it to there uh, and i was once i have enough photos there then i'll do an edit series for you guys yeah awesome good excellent stuff so um just the last few comments here randy hello how are you and uh, let's see what you said here i have a nikon 80 to 200 f 2.8 d lens you can play baseball with <laughs> I know that lens. That lens is a great lens, by the way. 
the phenomenal lens. Nice job, Steve. Thank you. Thank you for that. And Brana, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Excellent stuff. Right. Like I said, just a small announcement for uh, next couple of weeks. I will be reducing my videos and uh, so I may not do my Tuesday's videos. I'll just keep it as Sunday. Uh, it de really depends on my time because uh, you know I have a young family and uh, it's not always possible uh, to have a, a, all these spare times to produce videos, especially now they're staying at home. London is yet another lockdown and uh, or, or tier three now. So, uh, so it, it's ever so difficult for me to produce content in this sort of environment. And uh, so uh, to apologize if I haven't been really upping my, my game in terms of video productions because I, it is, uh, it's time, you know, that I can't find any at the moment. Uh, so during Christmas time, I think that I'm going to take it easy. I'm going to uh, take a small break. Uh, I will going to continue for uh, my live stream because I love chatting to you guys. I will, I will keep my live stream going. So next week, we're going to have a Christmas day today, so uh, Christmas time to, uh, 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 next week. So be sure to come in and uh, join me together with your Christmas hat on. Have an eggnog latte. And I'm going to make my eggnog next week uh, for my live stream. So to next week, I think we're going to have a just general chat about things. You want to talk to me about anything? Uh, very welcome. And if I have enough photos, I'm going to do the live edit next week. But let's see what happens. But I'm trying to be a relaxed uh, video next week. So uh, if we're going to do a live stream, it's going to be a really happy, just fun thing just to get together, you know. Just to talk, nothing but photography, but Olympus, but Michael Forther, anything, you know, that makes us happy and make us where we are today. So all good, excellent stuff. So uh, um, that's all I want to say today. So thank you once again for joining me for my live stream. And I really so appreciate it. Uh, all your support, all your attentions. You know, you've been here. You know, some of you guys have been here from the beginning of this chat to now two and a half hours. Man, I don't know how you can do that. And uh, so thank you again. And uh, I will see you all next time. And stay tuned for my lens video. Remember, I'm testing this bad boy here. You can't, you don't know what it is. I'm not saying what it is. You just have to stay tuned for this video because it's coming out very, very soon. So I'll see you all next time. Remember, if you don't subscribe or haven't subscribed or put on the notification, do that right now. And then the bell is there. Just click on it. And then uh, you will see my next video as and when it appears in the internet. Right, guys, I'll see you all later and happy Christmas. And uh, if I don't see you next week and uh, enjoy your Christmas holiday, enjoy the new year. I know this year has been rubbish, but I know next year is going to be great. Let's do that. Okay, guys, I'll see you all next time. Remember the edit series. This is the uh, uh, email you send the photos to me for edit series. So all you do, thank you. Right, stay safe and all the best to you guys. Bye for now.